on Verge Friday from the climate control dome, the chilly temperatures in Nashville, the Music City Bowl. It's BC against Georgia. We go to Mark Jones and Chris Spielman now for a preview, guys. It is a little chilly, Chris. So look inside the Boston College line. And Fred Gibson back deep. Gibson at the goal line. On the reverse. To the Corey Bryant. Bryant! Oh, what a return! Mark Rick pulls a fast one on the opening kickoff. 81 yard return. You can see the Florida State and Mark Rick right there. Bobby Bowden forever has been known as a trickster and a gambler. I love the way they start this football game. They have nothing to lose. They want to come out and make a big play and make a gamble. It pays off. What a great job by Georgia in executing the reverse on a kickoff return. All the way down, Chris, to the 14 yard line. Georgia leads the SEC in kickoff return. There's evidence, first and 10, Green at quarterback. And he's sacked back at the 16-yard line by Scott Bradley. Take a look at the starting quarterback, David Green, with the redshirt freshman. Completed 59% of his passes this year with 17 touchdown tosses. The skill people behind him, led by Veron Haynes, J.T. Wall in the backfield. Some key and good receivers, Edwards and Gibson. Big targets, Mark. Very big, fast targets. And down at 11, Gibson in motion. Gibson, who got a good block. Touchdown, Georgia! seconds of play the Bulldogs are taking a six nothing lead again another good call mark to get the hands into a guy that could run what they did was they outflanked Boston College's defense they had more and the extra point is good for the Bulldogs Bennett knocks it through more blockers than defenders mark that's what I'm talking about being outflanked Gibson, meanwhile, a little shaken up on the bench. No, actually, this is a lateral. Oh, that's a downfield pass. There's a great block by Gray. And I talked about speed. Once he received that football, you saw the burst and power and his will to want to get in the end zone. I always talk about this, Mark. Receivers blocking downfield. You see Damian Gary with the block downfield. Jermaine Edwards, or Terrence, excuse me, Terrence Edwards with the block downfield. When you can get your receivers blocking downfield, you get big plays. So in just 55 seconds, the Bulldogs take a 7-0 lead as Gibson is checked out on the sidelines. And there's the look of a sly fox on the sidelines. Mark Rick, you mentioned the Bobby Bodden in him. 8-3 on the season, 5-3 in conference play. 2-3 against top 25 opponents. They played a very tough schedule. And 4-1 and on the road this year. Meanwhile, Boston College finishing up 7-4 overall, tied for third in the Big East. Three of the four losses were against top 25 teams. They finished up 5-1 and one at home. So one loss, of course, and that tough one, which went down to the dying seconds against the University of Miami. Mark, this is a chance for Boston College now. They have to come out, and I'm not saying that they have to score a touchdown, but they have to establish at least a drive. Burke and Camella back deep for Boston College. This is Camella, the 18. Rock at the 27-yard line. Starting quarterback for Boston College is Brian St. Pierre, a six-foot-four-inch junior, a first-year starter who threw a touchdown pass in every game that he's played this year. Meanwhile, behind him, William Green, the best running back arguably in the country, along with Camella, Burke, Dewalt, and Ryan. Ryan's going to be a part of this offense. Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, wants their tight end involved in the passing game. Georgia this year struggled against the pass. They were stout against the run, and this is William Green stopped up after a gain of about one by the strong safety, Jermaine Phillips. Let's take a look at the offensive line for Boston College. A good group, Colombo, 
need Copen, Parento, and Bell is not starting in his place. It'll be number 69, Frank Wilpert from Oak Ridge, New Jersey. That's almost a great athlete for his size, like an offensive tackle that you love to have. He has that big, long wingspan, like a 747 wingspan. And up against Charles Grant and the rest of the gang, Pollock, Veal, and Sullivan. Grant leading the team with six sacks. Second down and eight, St. Pierre pulls it down. He's brought down just beyond the 30-yard line, about five yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down at about five to go. Let's take a look at the linebackers for the Bulldogs. Witherspoon, Tony Gilbert, and Boss Bailey, the brother of Champ Bailey, Gilbert in the middle. And Gilbert's in the middle of 250 pounds. It's tough to move out of there. On the corners, it'll be Bryant and Thornton. Inside, Curry gets the start for Biero along with Phillips. Jermaine Phillips, the unquestioned leader. Graduate student for Georgia Bulldogs. Third down and six on Boston College's open drive of the game. APR fires incomplete. Intended for Jamal Burke. And Kevin McMiler will come in to punt for the Eagles. Yeah, Jamal Burke pulled up on his route a little bit. He came out of his route, he kind of stopped. He wasn't expecting that football. St. Pierre thought he was going to continue the sideline. Burke stopped his route. He's got to finish the route. Keep in mind that Georgia led the SEC in punt returns this year. So the special teams for Boston College is a work that out for them. Tyler has a 43.2 per punt. It's up a low line drive this time. Fielded on the run by Gary. There's a flag down. And Gary is brought down to the 36-yard line. And Boston College violating that two-yard halo that you're supposed to give to the punt returner. Nick Define, our referee today, in the white hat. Interference on the two-yard belt on the kicking team. The five-yard penalty, first down. You know, sometimes, folks, it pays when you roll the dice. And Georgia did that right off the opening kickoff and converted on this Gibson touchdown. The Bulldogs with the lead when we come back. about Nashville? I'm mean, just a place I've never been. My heart keeps going back again. I want to take a ride. <laughs> Chevy Trailblazer, everything else just seems kind of weak. The all-new 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. AOL keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver. With AOL, I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening emails like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. Sounds good. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Hey, Edge Gel is going to clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. With dirt and oil every time you shave. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Fielding and Holly Rowe at Adelphia Coliseum on the banks of the Cumberland River. With the network inside the 7-0 Georgia out of the gate real quickly after a long kickoff return on the opening play of the game. Green going up top. 
incomplete intended for Terrence Edwards. He was being covered by the call of Lenny Walls. That was a catch of the ball, Chris. That was a, it was a great throw. Now, Walls has pretty decent coverage, but he loses sight of the receiver. Now, when you have a deep route, the one thing you want to do is keep your head on the receiver. If you don't, you'll see that he'll pull away from you, get to the side. Walls has got to keep vision on the receiver and turn when the receiver turns. Out of the backfield, complete to Damian Gary. Brought down right around the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. Let's take a look at the group up front for Georgia. It includes Foster, Alex Jackson, McGill, Breedlove, and Sidstrom. Kurt McGill, the leader of that group. Going up against this defensive front, Sean Guthrie off the edge along with Rossi. Martin and Goodwin inside. Guthrie, the big-time pass rusher. Third down and seven. They give it to Haynes, and Haynes is still on his feet. Veron Haynes breaking a couple of tackles, finally brought down by Doug Bissett. Veron Haynes emerging as a key player late in the season. Let's take a look at the linebackers, Bradley, Churchu, and Ott for Boston College. Bradley, the team captain. Walls and White in the secondary on the corners. Walls is the guy who was covering Edwards moments ago. Bissett and Terrence, the safety. Pick up of 32 yards. Haynes again down near the 20-yard line. David Green, a six-foot-three-inch redshirt freshman, the SEC's freshman of the year, completing 69% of his passes coming in. The coach is saying that they were really surprised by how well he did early in the season. But they're also confident, Mark, because they come out and are going no huddle with him right now. You see it coming on a blitz. And it's on the ground. The Eagles have it. Josh Ott, the Sam linebacker, recovered the loose ball. And it's the first turnover of the game. That was something BC needed. Again, you'll see that Ron Haynes has to control the football, especially when you're trying to spin for extra yardage like he is right here. They do a great job of stripping the football, and Scott Bradley of getting a hand in there and getting it out. Right there, the ball's out. Scott Bradley with the club gets it out. Now, running backs are off the top. Look, he's struggling for extra yards. What you want to do is protect the ball. Ball security, number one rule. First down and 10 coming back the other way from the 19-yard line. William Green. Got a few yards after the initial contact. Now to the 22-yard line. William Green, a six foot one inch junior, 215 pounds, out of Atlantic City, New Jersey, led the Big East with over 1,500 yards rushing. To go along with 15 touchdowns, take a good look at him, folks. He might not be in college football much longer. Now, what George is doing, Mark, is they're bringing up Jermaine Phillips and they're playing him at a linebacker position. They want to take William Green out of the game, bring the safety up, line him at linebacker. You don't have enough people to block him. They go to Green again. He can run in between the tackles, but that time finding a lot of resistance led by David Paula, the defensive tackle. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, something to keep your eye on. William Green, the running back for Boston College, has had the flu all week. He has been very dehydrated and was receiving an IV in the locker room before the game. We'll be curious. We'll have to see how his endurance lasts throughout this game, particularly when he's getting so many carries here early. A good point, Holly. Interesting news. No wonder I didn't see him around the hotel lobby much this week. Getting well in his room, third down and six. Pass complete for the first down out to the 32-yard line to Jamal Burke. And it's the first first down of the game for Boston College. Burke, a six-foot-one-inch junior. Really improved this season. And how do you beat the blitz? Well, they come with the blitz here. You've got to understand where the hot read is going to be and which hot read is going to be open. That time, Brian St. Pierre found Burke, who was the open hot read, and delivered the football without panic. Took his time and delivered a strike. Well, Boston College's offense beginning to get on track just a little bit here with 9 cents to play in the first period. Down the middle of the field, intended for the tight end, Frank Mizzarelli is incomplete. Thrown a little bit behind him that time. And this is how you attack cover two. 
You want to get the tight end down in the middle field to put pressure on the safeties, and it's a good throw. Actually, Jermaine Phillips does a nice job. He's been all over the football field for the Georgia defense. He's got made four tackles that I've counted a tip back. That was a nice recovery. If he didn't get his fingers on that, that was a big gainer for Boston College. Steve Pierre has to put a little bit more air under that ball. Brings up the second down and ten. Green with a little room this time, and William Green is out near the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and about three to go for Boston College. Now, the one thing you'll notice, what they did was they brought the receiver in motion. And what that does is that slows down the pursuit from the backside because the reverse must be on it. That allows William Green time to separate and get uh, the separation at that line of scrimmage because there's nobody closing down because they have to honor the reserve re reverse play in the outside defenders. Boston College, 41% in third down situations this year. Camella, the lone back. As Reed goes in motion, and Boston College has to burn a timeout. A little bit of confusion for the Eagles. Tom O'Brien will straighten things out on the sidelines when we come back. Remember that feeling of having to stay inside the line? It's sort of like communicating on the Internet today. Now imagine an Internet service that lets you fully express yourself. Break the boundaries with AT&T World Net Service Plus. After all, why just send a typeface when you can send your face with video email? And with the most reliable connection, hold off Washington, Texas, Washington, the Culligan Holiday Bowl, Friday, December 28th on ESPN. Back here at Adelphia Coliseum, I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Fieldman and Holly Rowe down on the sideline. A pivotal third down and three coming up for Boston College. They have the ball in their own 39-yard line. As their head coach, Tom O'Brien, watches from the sideline. A flag down, the pass intended for Keith Hemming is being covered by Bruce Thornton, number seven. That's a good read by Brian St. Pierre because what happens is when they have the corner pressed on the wide receiver, that's an option route by the wide receiver. What I mean by press, Mark, is that he's playing real tight to him. So the receiver knows... Defense, pass interference, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. The receiver knows he's got to take him deep when he has press coverage. And you'll see it right here. There's Thornton right on. He's in his face. He's got in, in the face. And there he punched him in the face right there. But, and there's a, the interference right there. He's got to turn his head and look for the ball. When that receiver's hand goes up, he has to turn and look and lean. Thornton didn't look and lean that time. The Eagles, the first down and 10 from Georgia's side of midfield at the 45. Green on a little counter. William Green down to the 39-yard line. Tackled by Boss Bailey, the strong side linebacker. The Big East, folks, has enjoyed a good measure of success in the three previous seasons here in the Music City Bowl. Look at that. Virginia Tech, Syracuse, and West Virginia all vanquishing their SEC foes. This is last year, I believe, that the Big East will be in there. Yep, it's 10 moves in next year. 10 moves in. Second down and three. Camella and Green out of the eye. Green. About two yards short of the first down, brought down by Tony Gilbert, the team's leading tackler on defense for Georgia. 6'1", 246-pound junior. When you watch William Green, the one thing that has impressed me so far is that he never gets knocked backwards. He's always falling forward. The initial contact is getting everything and maximizing each run. That's a good running back that can do that. As fierce as a competitor as Coach O'Brien has ever been associated with. That's what he says. Third down and one for Boston College. Green slips. Falls forward. The first down marker. Looks as if he's got it. He's tackled once again by Bailey. Mm. 
looks like they're going to give them the first down. We have an injured player down to the field. It's the center, Dan Copen, and that would be the key can continue. Don't want to speculate, but he is a key cog in their offense. I don't know if that's Copen or not. I think it's, it might be Trento. Right. Yeah, Copen, you're right. Copen's the guy that's... Uh, Although all those guys are right in there, Copen is the guy that makes all the calls to the offensive line and tells them how to block certain plays according to the front on defense. Great relationship between Copen, there he is, the center and the starting quarterback, Brian St. Pierre. The two of them are roommates. They've developed some great chemistry between the two, which really pays off on the field. Absolutely. It's good to see the big Phyllis dog off there and all his offensive linemen give him a hand. They, they're, they're bonding. They're buddies. They, they like to see those big fellas. They help him. They don't get much love either. No. Nope. Right at 8.30, Capital One Bowl, we continuing on ESPN with the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Longhorn quarterback Major Applewhite. Yeah, he's getting the start. He's number nine, Texas, against the 20th-ranked Washington Huskies. Defensive standout Larry Triplett. And during the game, folks, log on to ESPN.com and play... First Friday with our coaches Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey. Here's Green. On the ninth play of the drive, Tony Gilbert makes the tackle on Green. So far, Mark, the Georgia linebackers have been pressed. Why do I say that? Because when they're making contact with the offensive line, they're making contact with them at the line of scrimmage, and they're not staying on block. They're defeating blockers, not giving one for one, and making the play. That's good, solid linebacker play. Good news for Boston College, Chris. Parento back in the ballgame with his starting right guard spot. Second down and ten. A three-receiver formation. William Green in the backfield for B.C. complete to Red. We brought down at the 27-yard line. About three yards short of the first down. It'll be third down coming up for Boston College. Now, Chris, we talked about it a few moments ago. Sometimes you can run the same thing on a different look. It's about formation, right? Oh, absolutely. And Boston College will give you a ton of formations. They'll give you 12 personnel, 21 personnel, different types of combinations of back and tight ends, three wide, one wide, all kind of different formations. Run the same plays, but with different people. A lot of motion marks to try to confuse the defense. So far, they've run it nine times to four passes. Backs out of the eye, and they run it to Green. Gets to the edge, and got a good block. William Green with the first down at the 15-yard line. And some good blocking downfield by Dedrick DeWalt, number 11. Among other receivers, a 13-yard pickup for William Green. Again, you'll see Dedrick DeWall, a receiver, blocking downfield. Camella getting out there and getting a nice job of getting his hands blown up, grabbing a little shirt there, right there. But again, DeWall is getting a nice job. And I talk about this every week that we do a game. Receiver's blocking downfield. Got, has his hands inside. Now, when you have your hands inside, usually you won't get called for holding. For the court of green, about four more yards on the play. First and ten from the 15. They're going to ride William Green, and why not? And if you watch Green run, sometimes he delivers the blow as opposed to receiving the blow. Well, he just delivered one on Jermaine Phillips. I'll tell you that. Jermaine sat there and gave him five, and William gave him five back, which I like to see in that sportsmanship. But to see William Green again, the power is falling forward and not going down with the initial hit. That's what makes a good running back. You can't go down with the initial hit, or you'll just be a guy. You've got to be something other than a guy. <laughs> Averaging a little over four yards per run. Green with a split personality off the field, kind, gentle, sociable on the field, a menace. Menacing that Bulldog defense down to the five-yard line, tackled by Gilbert. You're going to take a look at the power of the term used when you're talking about people pulling. You have your fullback leading the play, then you have your backside guard, Parento, coming around. Now, Green, again, vision doesn't follow his blocker. He sees the hole. He's going to cut it up inside and go where the hole is. It's that instinct. You don't always have to run where the play is designed as long as you go to the hole. There's three or four, Chris, in third down in situations today. Third and one. St. Pierre keeps it himself and moves the pile into well, about the four-yard line. 
First down, Boston College, goal to go. St. Pierre, pretty big guy himself versus 6'4", 217. Well, he's a big, and you can run a quarterback sneak when you have a guy that size, but that time, BC's offensive line won the battle against Georgia's defensive line because they were able to uh, take the initial hit but still get a surge forward, which allowed St. Pierre to get the first down. Their pad level was better than Georgia's pad level. Well, they call it the red zone, but it's more about the green zone, money time. 31 to 38, inside the 20 this year. St. Pierre falls, and they're going to have to spot this for a loss back at the 7-yard line. I think he had some trouble pulling back. Uh, I think I think his roommate stepped on his foot. <laughs> Don't be talking about that one today. <laughs> Dude, that was your fault. No, man, that was your fault. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Now well, the guard, guard steps down on his foot, taking his pass set. Strong inside foot. That's what those linemen do on a pass set. You see his foot, that's on his left foot right there, and that hurts. Ooh. Trust, believe me, I know when you have an uh, inch and a half cleat driven through your top of your foot, that hurts. The 16th play of the drive coming up for Boston College, second and goal. The Walsh in motion. Green out of the backfield. The Bulldogs swarm into the ball. Bring him down at the eight-yard line. The pack was led by Chris Clemens, number 48, and David Pollock. It'll be third down and goal for BC. You know, I'm, I'm sort of a fan of defensive football. The one thing that makes great sort of, sort of, <laughs> what makes great defense is, is deep team defense. How do you define team defense? I only define it one way by guys running the football. Now St. Pierre had a late read. William Green was open early. But look at that. Guys converging all over the place. That's great team football, and that's how you play defense. I don't see it enough in college football, but I am seeing it from this full on defense right now. Look into the eyes of Tony Gilbert of Georgia on third and goal. Incomplete and ten for the tight end who is open, Sean Ryan. And in comes the field goal unit for Boston College. <laughs> Yeah, Mark, earlier uh, earlier when he tried to go to the tight end, he didn't put enough air into the ball. Now he's down in the red zone. You don't have to put a lot of air into the ball. He put too much air in that ball. That's the one where you got to throw that line drive. He knows it. He said, Chris, you're right. I should have threw the line drive instead of throwing the lobster. Throw the line drive, you'd have a touchdown. That was open in the end zone. Torcino in to attempt the field goal, and he just sneaks it inside the upright. So the Eagles are on the board. They're in the fourth annual Music City Bowl. It's 7-3 when we come back. Station of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Nashville. Have you thought about visiting Music City USA lately? And by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. A look at the glow of nighttime beginning to descend on Nashville, Tennessee, here in Music City. I'll go sick. Hey, you saw him before the game. His shoulders are stacked with muscle, man, but the hind legs, I don't know, Chris. Ugga, Ugga needs to start squatting. He's doing a lot of upper body, biceps and chest look good. He needs to work on the legs. Uh, Gibson, four yard deep. Another good return by the Bulldogs out to the 32-yard line. At 131 to play in the first quarter, a 33-yard return. We're here at Adelphia Coliseum, the fourth annual Music City Bowl. Matchup between the Big East and the SEC. It's Boston College against number 19, Georgia. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe on the sideline. From all of us here at ESPN, to all of you at home, all the best in the upcoming new year. Georgia jumped out to a 7 to nothing lead, courtesy of an 82-yard kickoff return on the game's opening play. But BC, after a 16-play drive just moments ago, kicked a field goal to make it 7-3. to three. Green complete to Damian Carey, still up. Two missed tackles by Boston College. That has been the bane of the defense this year. Here you have, you're going to have an option right off the boot leg. Gary's going to read the coverage and break it either in or out. Right here, he breaks it out using his speed to outrun the linebacker to the sideline. Then the one thing, if you're Boston College and you're Frank Spaziano, you want your guys to make tackles. You cannot miss tackles against this football team because they'll hit a big play on you. David Green, complete to his side end, Randy McMichael. 
A 6'4 junior with a lot on his mind. I'll tell you more about that later. Folks, tomorrow at noon Eastern time, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN with the Motor City Bowl when the MAC champion Toledo Rockets with All-American running back Chester Taylor roll into Detroit to face quarterback Dino Gabulli and Cincinnati. Ron Hayes brought down by Parent as we go under a minute to play now in the first period. There's a look at the defensive coordinator, Frank Faziani. His team has had trouble defending the run at times this year. Well, yeah, and I, and I see why, because they have one guy on the tackle as opposed to what we witnessed with Georgia's defense. We had 11 red hats flying in the football. They run it again. Josh Ott making the stop. That was a good, good solid tackle by Ott right there. He kept his head up. He one step and wrap, two steps and squeeze. And he's able to stand a big man up. That's tough to stand a big man up running full speed downhill. Shoulders, north and south. Ron Hayes is that. Second down and six. The back side of the eye. And Green has to throw it away. Frick Gibson was the nearest receiver. Tom Martin was in on the pressure for Boston College with 19 seconds to go in the first. And they had his own blitz on there. Why? Because Sean Guthrie, the defensive man and their best pass rusher, was dropped back covering the out. That's what Coach Baz has to do to get pressure on these guys. He's not a big man-to-man -man guy. Not a big man-to-man -man team. A big zone pressure team. Third down and six. Incomplete intended for Terrence Edwards. That's the second one, Chris, that has gone through his arms today. And I allude back to an earlier part of the season for Georgia when Edwards had some problems hanging onto the ball. Yeah, that's, that's been a, uh, he's improved the last four games, but the, the problems that he has has hanging onto the football. Now, Walls does a good job of getting in there. That ball should have been caught because Walls' hand was a little bit late. But that's a ball you have to catch, and, and David Green delivered it where he needed to deliver. He hit him right in the number. That's a good throw. you got to make the catch. Fourth down and six, and the Bulldogs are going to go for it. They're 9 of 18 on the season in fourth down. BC coming with a blitz. Hanged by the screen. And it's going to be real close, down to the 27-yard line. That's the perfect call against the blitz, but did he get it? Well, somebody's got to be accountable for him in man-to-man. -man. They're, they're random blitz, then you have to pick up the back on the screen. And how you tell that? There's a short set by the offensive lineman. And when they start all running to the sidelines, you got to start yelling, screen, screen, screen. Then again, Veron Haynes catches the ball and falls forward. Can't emphasize how important that is for a running back to always go forward. The big back at 223. Didn't make it. But Spaziani's defense wins the first battle of the game. I like the call, though. I like going for it on fourth down. But Rick left the, left the conservative play calling card at home. <laughs> he is a Bobby Bowden disciple, after all. Right here, Margona show you. See, there's a short set. That means they're not getting any depth on their set. Then they all start running the sidelines. That means these guys got to start running the sidelines and watch for Ron Hayes. If he does get this, Hayes, excuse me, that's a good job of the defensive lineman. How you stop screens and draws. Defensive lineman downfield making a play. That was a great job by Goodwin running down there and hustling and getting Haynes down before he got the first down. Four seconds to go in the first period. Little flea picker. Complete to DeWalt. And a first down at the Georgia 42-yard line. Coach O'Brien's got some tricks too. Sure does. And that's the last play of the first period. Whatever you can do, hey, we can do too, says Coach O'Brien. Back to the second quarter after this. Unscripted with Chris Connolly. Weekdays at 5 on ESPN. <laughs> Duty. Available with the Duramax diesel. 
the most powerful diesel you can get in a pickup. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. Hey, boys, what y'all doing? Just out here checking these old fences. Yeah, me too. Hey, is that a dollar? Yeah, it's on my side of the fence. <laughs> Wrong. That's on my side. No, that's on my side. It is on my side. <laughs> guys, right, guys, it's just a buck. Oh, yeah, with 10, 10, 2, 20, all calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents. 20 minutes for 99 cents? And 7 cents a minute? After 20. Wow, that's cheap. Guess he had to make a phone call. <laughs> call me. Dial 10, 10, 2, 20. <laughs> Welcome to Mike Lanez. We're sending our best to Salt Lake City, too, to serve the world's best athletes. Congratulations to the over 400 winners of McDonald's Global Crew Competition. Welcome to McDonald's. McDonald's, a worldwide Olympic partner. Japanese are expecting a war. Now on DVD and video, history comes alive. We have to strike the heart of Japan the way they have hit us. Pearl Harbor. Own it now on DVD and video. Rolaids announces unbeatable taste. Five great ways to spell fast relief. And now taste tests show even Tums can't beat Rolaids. In mint or fruit flavors, what a great tasting way to spell relief. Rolaids. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, we can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. Country Music Hall of Fame in downtown Nashville, Tennessee, where country music is king. All your favorites on display there, Johnny Cash, Travis Frick, some of your favorites, too. Yeah, you and I were in there yesterday. Yeah. I didn't know you were such a big country music guy. I'm versatile. You are. <laughs> the Whale and Jennings on display. Yeah. Brian Carter, that's his favorite, our producer. First down and ten. Read in motion. And William Green brought down at the 21 yard line by Jonathan Sullivan. Well, this game started off with a frenetic pace. The game's opening kickoff. Gibson handed it off to DeCorey Bryan on the reverse, and he went 86 yards within scoring range. They got a touchdown two plays later. You got a big-time receiver get the ball in his hands. Third Green delivers to Gibson on the screen, takes it in for a six. A 15-yard reception, and Willie Green showing his power and speed. 11 carries for 46 yards. A three-receiver formation, Green in the backfield on second and nine. Georgia Blitzen. St. Pierre got it away just in the nick of time. Bailey and Gilbert, the linebackers, coming with the pressure. Again, you're going to see uh, zone pressure here. This is called a Sam and Mike blast. That's the Sam backer. That's the Mike backer. They're hitting it both on the same side, bringing five off of one side. When you're able to do that, you outnumber the offensive linemen. St. Pierre did a good job of getting out of trouble. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's quick enough to get away from trouble and make a good decision to throw the ball out of bounds. The Bulldogs, meanwhile, Chris, calling a timeout on third down and nine. Just underway here in the third quarter. We'll be back to Nashville right after this. Lots of words to sell you, but conveniently forget to tell you how much they cost. Just for the record, most cost over $20 a month. 
Meanwhile, Med Zero and Juno are only $9.95, less than half the price. Maybe the others prefer words because the numbers speak for themselves. Join the millions who have united online. Call 877-ONLY-995 or visit us at medzero.net or juno.com. Additional phone charges may apply. Boston College met Georgia, the 86 Hall of Fame Bowl. Holleran to Kelvin Martin on the touchdown with just 32 seconds to play, and BC coming away with a 27-24 victory. They are one and two against Georgia all time. This is the fourth meeting between the two crews. Third down and nine for the Eagles. Knows the ball in the 41-yard line of Georgia. Again, you see them motioning and switching the personnel, switching the formation, trying to confuse that Georgia defense. The play fake. And incomplete in and out of the arms of Jamal Burke. That should have been a first down. That was dropped. Again, they're attacking in the middle of the field versus the cover, too. Why? Because you have a linebacker that is responsible for getting inside there. Burke gets behind him. He's got to catch the football. That's a well-thrown ball by St. Pierre. It knocked him in the face mask. Did knock him in the face mask. Yeah. You want to get take your shot. You might as well catch the ball and take your shot instead of dropping the ball and taking your shot. Tyler is the punch once again. Fair catch back at the nine-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rose. Mike, the Boston College offensive coordinator Dana Bible told me before the game that he was concerned about the athleticism of Georgia's defensive line. He knew that they would put eight guys in the box and that they had incredible athletes with speed and quickness. He thought the only way for his O-line to combat that was with some toughness. He felt like they did that against Miami when they almost knocked off the number one team, the Hurricanes. But so far tonight, we've seen them struggling a little bit. They've got to pick up their energy level and maybe do a little bit more tough maneuvering on the O-line. Holly will see what happens next time they get the ball. Right now it's Georgia's turn. And green fire is incomplete at the 20-yard line. Intended for Damian Gary. Another drop football. Seen a few by both teams so far. David Green does a nice job again. Again, they're big play action pass. Mark Rick believes in play action. We haven't seen much drop back except out of shotgun. They're running that bootleg, and that was a good throw because he delivered the outcut throwing across his body, rolling to his right knee and left hand. It's a difficult throw. Sets up a second down and ten for the Bulldogs. Green completes it this time. The 24 is LeBron Mitchell. He was working on Lenny Walls, the tall corner. Mitchell, one of the captains, making the catch. The 6'2 senior, a pickup of 16 yards in the first half. He's playing a cover three here, and you'll see Walls playing deep and off. Now that's just a little bit too much cushion. Why? Because you're giving him points to get to the first down mark. You've got to get a little tighter on the cover. Haynes running the ball out to the 29-yard line. Ron Haynes got his chance when Smith got injured. He grew up on the blacktop in the Bronx, New York, playing basketball instead of football. He transferred from Western Kentucky. He's come a long way since his first high school practice when he came out to practice with his knee pads on his hip. <laughs> he hadn't had it figured out yet. Second down is six. Pass complete to Mitchell once again. And it's another 
first down for the Bulldogs. When you have a quarterback like Green that can make that on the left throw, when you want the most difficult passes in football to throw, that's how you attack the zone pressure or cover three team. They're doing that because that's the weak part of the defense. Georgia not wasting much time up at the line of scrimmage. They give it to the fullback for the first time of the game, J.T. Wall. Brought down by Guthrie. When we say fullback, Chris, we mean full. Yeah, I think he's a car keys in a pocket for 260. <laughs> I don't know if he's 257. That looks a little bigger than 257. Car keys and maybe even a biscuit. Let's go, Let's go, Doug! Second down and seven. Plenty of Georgia fans on hand today. They've been designated as the home team for this game. Green under pressure gets it off. And a first down out of the 40-yard line. Mitchell three times in a row on the reception. Looks like he's found himself a favorite target, a pickup of 19. Then you notice now they're going to go to the no huddle after a big play. But what happens here, Mark, when you play a cover two, we talk about this all the time, linebackers have to get depth. If they don't get depth, the safeties have no chance. They have to take away the middle of the field. Green fires complete, but guess who? Mitchell, that's four in a row. Again, you gotta like Green's ability to create and make something happen and not look to throw the football but five times for his receivers it's tough to cover those guys all day long then deliver the football now i like what george is doing here they're not giving bob's college time to catch their breath they're going no water taking control in the initiative the dc wants the time of possession battle in the first period but things turning around here green to pass gibson got turned around a little bit and couldn't close with the ball quickly enough he was working on Peter Sean. Yeah, actually, he does a nice job here because he's running a deep out cut, which you'll see he'll adjust on the football. Right there is the out, but no, he's going to adjust on the football, and that's a good job of being aware and Green being aware of reading each other, knowing where to throw the football. Talked about the time of possession. This is the ninth play of the Georgia Drive coming up. high and down hard at the 23 as Veron Haynes. Haynes has been bothered by a groin injury for most of the season. Estimates put him at about, not quite 100, about 85% for this game, but he looks like he's running hard. Yeah, he? he's running hard. He's running full speed. And I, I'll tell you, this, this, that shot right there, if you're up in the air and you get your legs stretched out, that'll take the groin. This groin seems fine to me. Third and four. First down at the 13-yard line. It looked like he was trapped initially, but escaped. Perrin making the stop. Well, he was trapped because DC had a safety blitz up. The set comes in and gets a mouthful of offensive linemen. You'll see the safety blitz right there. It's the set. He got KO'd. Now, there's a nice job of Bradley coming around, and Haynes being patient, hitting the open hole, and a good job of Perrin of wrapping up a big back in the open field. You see Bradley get cut off from the backside. He's got to get over the top that one. Play fake, picked off. Picked at the line and picked off by the Eagles. Josh Ott comes up with the ball after the tip. The second turnover of the game by the Bulldogs. By number 45, Right now, let's go to Chris Fowler in the studio. Mark, I want to remind the folks who might be tuning in for Sports Center that can be seen over on ESPN2, Kenny Main, Trey Wingo, and Chris McHenry. The story of Bill Cartwright, new coach of the Bulls. News on Peter Forsberg. Please come back. And the new Matt Movon speaks to his team. That's Sports Center on ESPN2 this evening in a couple minutes. Mark. Right, thanks a lot, Chris. First down and 10 for Boston College. Knows the ball at the 15-yard line. How about Jones along with Chris Gilman and Holly Rose in Nashville. Green stops up. Loss of about one on the play. Kevin Field making the tackle. There's a good job of defensive lineman Steve Martin get his hand up right there, gets that big call up, and Ott secures the football. He does a good job of getting it out of there. Now, George is giving up the ball in the red zone twice. If you give up the ball in the red zone, you give up opportunities to put points on the board, and you let this DC team hang around. 
stay in the football game. And last time they got a turnover, they created points off the turnover. As the defense interception of the season by Green. Here's the other Green, Williams, in space, and off to the races. And it's punched out at the seven-yard line by Jermaine Phillips, who closed the gap on Green. You can't sleep on William Green. <laughs> There's so much to talk about this play, I can't even stand That was a tackle trap. Now, you saw Big Colombo come around and get a great job of blocking the middle linebacker, Gilbert, prohibiting him from filling the hole. Then you see Phillips take a bad angle at first, but not quitting on the football and running down a fastback that has great speed, that has the wherewithal to come with the old punch to punch the ball out of there. Now, Green and Boston College is lucky that that didn't go through the end zone because if that went through the end zone, that's a touchback going the other way for Georgia. That's a great break for Boston College. A great job of playing football, though. Great job. Great hustle. Great Eastwood guard camper, Chris. Preston goal for Boston College. Derek Knight in for Green at tailback. Knight is tackled at the nine by Chris Clemens. This is the fourth annual Music City Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee at Adelphia Coliseum. Boston College taking it number 19, Georgia. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines. Seven to three right now. The Bulldogs out of the SEC with the lead, but BC with the ball in the 10-yard line, second down and goal. Mark, this is a great time to go right back to their tight end in the middle of the field. They got Green in there, doesn't have his breath yet. Wouldn't be surprised to see a play action look for his tight end. On the flank, the wall's incomplete. He had his hands on it, and he was working on number 27, Brandon Williams. Well, again, another drop football. That's a ball that needs to be caught. Now, Brandon Williams gives up the inside. You, you cannot give up the inside on the goal line. You must force the receiver to go to the outside, especially on that slant. See, that ball was thrown and delivered perfectly. Why? Because the wall was the only guy that had a chance to catch that football. Well, you couldn't be upset at St. Pierre if he were a little hatched at his receivers right now. That's at least two blocks. And one of four, passing the ball in third down. Third and goal. That one they hang on to. DeWalt with a touchdown. Great. Oh, that was great. You created out good on that. Yeah. 
First down and 10. That's complete. Out to the 31 yard line for Damian Gary. All right, the, look, look, the linebackers have to start recognizing play action. How you recognize play action, you not only see it, but you hear it. If there's no uh, 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 that means the linemen are past that. <laughs> That means they're run blocked because they grunt when they run block. Very descriptive. Very accurate. I like that. Haynes. Brought down at the 32-yard line. Folks, tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Capital Bowl Week continues on ESPN with the Pelican Holiday Bowl. Longhorn quarterback, yeah, Major Applewhite, getting his first start of the season. Number nine, Texas, taking on number 20, Washington. And their defensive standout, Larry Triplett. Texas against Washington. On ESPN. Second down and nine. Wide open at the 40. And still on his feet. Randy McMichael. I alluded to him earlier about a lot on his mind. That's because he's contemplating taking the next step and playing on Sunday. Just the junior at 6'4", 228. Great receiving tight end if he wants to play on Sundays. He needs to improve on his blocking a little bit. But you like what he does after he catches the football. He turns in a running back. That time breaking tackles again by BC. BC needs to get 11 goal half running that football. There's the play action. It's Michael, what a great catch. And stepping out of bounds at the 37 yard line. But look at the hands on bit number 86. And he was the one that made the key plays in that victory at Tennessee. Yeah, they're, they're successful with this play right now. It's the bootleg. Now, as the bootleg, see, the linebacker's got to see that guy pull. That guard pulled from the opposite side. This is a great catch. And, and if, you, if you're going to roll block somebody, then don't get on the football field. Come up there and wrap your arms and hit him. Don't roll block him. Wrap your arms. Especially a guy's voice. I mean, he's that big. That big, you got to wrap your arms. You, you, you can't body block them. You're not allowed to body block if you play defense. You have to wrap your arm. That's how you tackle. If, if, if you look in the dictionary and tackle, it says wrap your arm. That's it. McMichael, meanwhile, first team all SEC this year had an outstanding season as witnessed by those statistics. And as I mentioned, he made several key plays and reception in that Tennessee victory by Georgia in Knoxville. Second and 13 for the Bulldogs. Bradley still on his feet. And Georgia has turned it over three times now in the ballgame. Frank Fazziani's defense is coming up huge here in the first half. That time, the linebackers not only saw, but they heard the play action, the soft set, no grunts by the offensive linemen. That allowed them to get depth. When you get depth, you see Scott Bradley reading the quarterback's eyes, and there he is, and catching the ball with his hands. Now, Scott Bradley does a good job of turning into the running back. Now, the thing about David Green and why Scott Bradley got such a great jump, David Green's eyes were fixed on that tight end the whole time, Mark. He didn't look any other place. He looked right at the tight end. Bradley saw that, stepped right in front of the play. Chris, BC has 10 points off the turnover so far in the ballgame. See if they can convert here. First down and 10, 7 14 to play in the first half. DeWalt on the reverse. Edric DeWalt is rocked in the 50 yard line by Chris Clemens. The DeWalt is the guy you want to get in space for if he runs 100 meters. 10.4, that's quick. And he has a little snake there. They set that play up earlier in the football game. The first time they ran it, they gave the ball to Green. They slowed down the back side. That time they gave it to the wall. That was gave a nice shot on the sideline, by the way. Austin College with a 10 to 7 lead. In possession of the ball at midfield. Green. Green now 
to the 47 yard line and downstairs to Holly Rowe. Holly? Present here with some very special guests. Jay Sevigny, the Vice President of Marketing for Gaylord Hotels. You're taking over the Music City Bowl and becoming the title sponsor next year. What prompted that move? Well, Holly, we're very happy to be to keep this here in Nashville. It's a great source of entertainment and uh, we're just happy to be part of keeping this here in Nashville and our success. You've got the new logo already rolled out. Let's give a look at it. It looks very nice. Gaylord Hotels. It's gotten bigger and bigger each year. The partnership with Gaylord obviously promises a bigger year next year, as well as the Big Ten. So uh, we're, we're excited for the town, and we're excited to have the whole world watching on ESPN. Sports market has exploded here for you. The Titans, you've got the Predators, and now the New York City Bowl. Is it everything you hope for? Oh, absolutely. And I think the good news is that the rest of the country is now seeing that it's all here right now in Nashville. Well, thank you very much. We enjoyed our time. Mark, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Yeah, I echo those sentiments. A very vibrant downtown area. Lots to do here in Nashville. First down and ten after that green reception. Into the ball game is Derek Knight, the backup tailback. And Knight is brought down at the 38-yard line. Derek Knight, more than just an understudy in that important Miami game, a close call for Boston College, a game which was very winnable, a game they almost upset the number one team. He ran for 78 yards on 27 carries and did well. And he's just a little bit different type back, smaller guy, a little quicker water buck type guy. Where Green is as opposed to the big flasher type guy that has speed and power. He's your, he's your water buck. Second down and eight. Two tight end formation. St. Pierre tucks it under. And wisely steps out of bounds after getting the first down at the 25 yard line. Folks, don't forget, if you want your all your new scores and highlights for today's action, football, basketball, and everything else, ESPN2 is on SportsCenter right now. If you want to flick over there and then come back and join us? Don't stay away too long. Lots happening here. Right now on ESPN2 at SportsCenter. First down and 10 for Boston College. Ball in the 25-yard line. It's 5-0-1 to play in the first half. The Waltz in motion. Nice play by Bruce Thornton, who closed on the ball while it was in the air. Uh, you said it, Mark. You did a great job of closing. Anytime you have your corner and you're out there on an island, you have to have closing speed. Now, that time, St. Pierre, that ball got away from him a little bit because the wall was open for a second there. He had him. He got to throw the ball outside. But there you see Bruce Thornton doing a great job of closing and getting that long arm across, got his body long, and knocked the ball away. St. Pierre, meanwhile, 6 to 13 passing for a total of 62 yards to go along with the touchdown. Second down and 10, Green the lone back. Green broke one tackle in the backfield, but was brought down by Josh Mallard at the 26-yard line. Folks, tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern time, Capital Bowl Week rolls on with the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Seaman. Texas Tech quarterback Cliff Kingsbury returning to his hometown of San Antonio to lead the Red Raider offense up against special team standout Khalil Hill and the Iowa Hawkeyes. We saw Hill earlier this season. He is a huge talent. The Eagles 5-9 on third down tonight. They've got to get to the 15 for the first down. Lots of contact and a flag in the end zone. Brandon Williams was covering the wall. Now i got to take a look at this now because I don't know if their feet just got tangled up where they're fighting for position. But St. Pierre made a strong throw because he still threw a, a kind of a rope, but he threw it off his back foot. That's a strong throw. He's going to go against the Bulldogs and Williams. Previous spot, first down. Now, if he did interfere with him, he didn't have to. He had good tight coverage on him. Again, it's that press coverage. So what are you going to do? You're going to go deep against that press coverage. Man, I mean, see, right there. He had that hand on his stomach. 
When that hand's on his stomach grabbing the shirt, that's a good call by the official. Great vision. Right there, the hand's grabbing that four. You gotta take the hand off the four, you have great coverage. You don't need to do that. ISO play. Backs it up in there with Camilla as your lead blocker. Well, his brother flew back with the New York Giants, so they, I'm sure they talk about lead blocking with each other. Got to hit it up in there and hit the linebacker. Boston College dominating. 145 yards, 62 passes. Georgia 67. Look at that. Wow, second down and eight. Into the middle of the pack and incomplete intended for DeWalt. Broken up by Robert Gether. They try to take advantage of the great pursuit by Georgia defense by pumping the ball into the corner of the end zone. Take thrown it and hitting a little check down by the walk, but Georgia did a good job playing this quick zone defense, breaking on the football. And once again, Boston College facing a third down situation. The tenth play of the Eagle Drive. They've been able to convert more often than not, or about 50% today. Brian St. Pierre has a lot of input into the game plan, so he has a good feel for this offense, and this is a real quarterback-intensive offense, isn't it, Chris? Well, it has to be, Mark, when you do a lot of different formations, you have to be able to line people up and make a lot of calls. Now, him and his buddy, the roommate, the center, can do a lot of communication with each other to make sure that the line and the quarterback are on the same page. That puts the back receivers on the same page and the other linemen on the same page because the two guys right there are on the same page. All right, here we go in third down and eight. Well, put to the top of the screen. And he intentionally threw that one over to all ten. Chris Clemens in on the first place for Georgia. Yeah, the one thing William Green, if he wants to be an NFL player, you better learn how to block. That time Clemens disregarded him like a rag doll and got pressure. William's got to step up there and sustain that block a little bit longer to give St. Pierre time to deliver the football. Sandro Scortino in to attempt the field goal from 26 yards out. Made the first one earlier today from 25. And he knocks this one through. The Boston College Eagles lead 13 to 7. In the fourth annual Music City Bowl, it's the Big East against the SEC. This building rife with emotion on both sides of the field. Plenty at stake as both teams try to end the season with an exclamation point. We'll be back after this. Awesome Hour Upper Body Home Workout, the new video from the creators of the best-selling Fitness Made Simple program. Work out with fitness celebrity John Baystow at home and learn the keys to sculpting a lean, muscular physique. The Awesome Hour Upper Body Home Workout provides exercises to help build your chest, back, shoulders, biceps, triceps, and even abs. Just one hour or less for each workout. Now there's no time excuse for not staying in shape. Have your credit card ready and call now to order. The most wonderful week of the year. Capital One Bowl Week continues Saturday at noon. Toledo battles Cincinnati. At 3.30, Texas Tech looks to stop Iowa. And at 5.30, K-State tries to put a hurt on the Q. Cincinnati Toledo, the Motor City Bowl at noon on ESPN. Iowa, Texas. 
Texas Tech, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl, presented by Siemens at 3.30 on ESPN. Syracuse, Kansas State, the Insight.com Bowl at 5.30 on ESPN2. Capital One Bowl Week, Saturday. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Red Zone from Old Spice. Intense protection for intense people. And by Chrysler. Drive equals love. A look at Parkland Broadway in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Got to hit that barbecue joint after the game. You buy him? Yeah, come on, you know I call my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my pocket like they got this one in them. Boston College after the field goal with a six-point lead. Edwards. Terrence Edwards with a good return out near the 30. And let's go back to Chris Fowler in the studio. All right, Mark, on the Dodge Halftime Report, we'll have highlights, a very unlikely freshman hero for Texas A&M. Take you to the West Coast, the report of Miami and Nebraska's matchup in the Rose Bowl, and the results of a poll on Verge Friday, the best Georgia player of all time. Geez, I wonder who that might be. That's coming up at halftime. Terry and Rod will join me. I'll take one guess and one only. <laughs> Got to be a linebacker. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> Veron Haynes has the ability to make yards after conjure up a catch up to the 37 yard line, about two yards short of the first down. This is a good opportunity now. Watch Dave Green operate because they're in a kind of a hurry up situation with 235 left in the first half. It gives you a chance to see a red It'll be the fullback this time, JC Wall number 49, and let's go downstairs to Holly. Nice something to keep your eye on here in the first half. With Boston College winning the time of possession, that means more bodies on the field participating. Georgia seems to be getting a little bit cold. Literally, this is the coldest weather they have played in all season long. Their equipment manager had to order all new tight, long sleeve shirts. The guys are freezing on the bench, and it seems like they're starting to tighten up just a little bit. Interesting point. Down in Athens, Georgia, pretty balmy right now. That's complete to Gibson. Nice move, and still up. And brought down at the 20-yard line is Fred Gibson, a bulldog first down. Well, again, they've had success with this out cut. You see David Green working one-on-one -on -one out here. It's a nice job of breaking this route off. Now he does a shake and bake. He's got a tackle. Parent misses the tackle. Watch this. He goes to the outside. Then he hits, plants off that outside leg so he can make the cut inside another plant. He does a good job of finishing off the run. Haynes. Brought down at the 11-yard line. Good tackle that time. Even you would admit that, Chris, by Parent. Yeah, Parent did come up, make a nice hit, and he also got a, a nice block from the seller right there. That's his big fullback with 257 supposed pounds. So he did a good job of ISO Tom Bradley winning that battle. Ryan Haynes to get extra yards in the corner. Gibson getting a breed on the sidelines on second down and one. And fell right near the first down marker at the 10 yard line. But this field position set up by number 82, Gibson of Georgia, with that nice catch and run. There he is. He says that he plans or is still thinking of playing a little bit of basketball after the season with the varsity basketball team. You see the athletic ability, the guy that size can run and catch and move like that, certainly that could translate over onto the basketball floor one way or another. Yeah, initially committed to the University of Florida in Gainesville, but changed his mind. A native of Florida. Meanwhile, we'll look at the measurements. A little bit short. Inches away. Innovative and creative Mark Rich. And third down in inches coming up. See what he calls. They got them all packed in there pretty tight. You got Haynes as a fullback right now. And Haynes got 
hit the first man through the hole. You said he was at fullback. That's the position that he played, Chris, before he was moved to tailback. Yeah, they lined him up there because you only have a, a yard to go, so you're going to get him the ball as quick as you can. You're not asking him to make any cuts, use any vision. Just hit it up in there, use your power with the big wall leading you up inside. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, sports center in game. Up to you by Don. Stopped up here in the line of scrimmage by Andy Romanowski. And we got a timeout down to the field with 53 seconds to play in the first half. Georgia's turned it over three times already today. We'll see what happens when we come back. In my family, if one wants pizza, the other wants Chinese pizza, even their stomachs don't agree. If one gets indigestion, the other one gets heartburn. If one gets nausea, the other one gets... So I get pepto -Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto-Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Agree. Pepto-Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. A Beautiful Mind, nominated for six Golden Globes, including Best Picture, Best Director, and Best Actor. Gentlemen, the great John Nash. His genius was pushed to the edge. Tell me what happened. He had lost his grip on reality. But in the fight of his life, I can do this. He would achieve the impossible. Eastwood and Roper give A Beautiful Mind two thumbs up. One of the very best movies of the year. A Beautiful Mind, rated PG-13. Now playing in select theaters everywhere January 4th. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, the playoff crunches on, and special guest coach Bill Parcells is back to help break it all down. Cordell Stewart, the Steelers QB, has emerged as a leader who could take his team to the Super Bowl. Cordell really impressed me. Plus, the 49ers' Garrison Hurst and his amazing comeback story. This 49ers team is better than they were because Garrison Hurst is better. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown, beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. And a look at Ryman Auditorium. Downtown, former home of the Grand Ole Opry here in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, a ton of great places to visit here in Nashville. Look at William Green being on. Might be going in to get another IV. And he suffered that flu earlier in the week, as Holly Rowe reported. A real pleasant young man with a lot of talent and a bright future. Eighth play of the Georgia Drive coming up. Batted down once again and almost intercepted by Boston College. Number 58, Derek Rossi, tipped it up. Boston College is doing a good job of recognizing, even though they're not getting penetration, what they can do is get their hands up and either get in vision of Brian Green or knock the football down. Did a great job of hands up and knocking the football down. And Gray, the usual starter there, unable to play because of an injury. Derek Rossi in a big call from the end. Third and goal. Gary into the end zone. Incomplete. Harris Edwards made the catch but out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Mike Green with the ball. It's a great call now. Uh, red flags all over the place. Why? Gary's lined up a tailback, not Haynes. Now, he had him open, but what happened, he waited too long because he's not used to gripping the ball to get his grip to throw the football. The ball floated a little bit in the back of the end zone. Ran out of room. It's a great call, though. Bennett now in to attempt the field goal for the Bulldogs from 24 yards out. 17 to 25 on the year. He knocks that one through to cut the drop from Carlos Lee to just three points with 39 seconds to go. He is a picture perfect. Seven to seven from that distance. We'll be back with more right after this. My father was a sports broadcaster, so I spent many Saturdays thinking about what an experience it might be having an opportunity one day to maybe run out a tunnel. I was 19 years old and I had that opportunity. There were 100,000 people in the stands. And as we came through that tunnel, it started to pack up in front of me and pretty soon it got kind of congested. And you couldn't really understand why things weren't just sprinting out onto the field. Our head coach, Pepper Rogers, doing somersaults right in the middle of the grass. He liked to say that's when he knew his team was ready. 
can you learn at Boston College? That academic excellence is what's the challenge. To make wise choices. To seek the truth. To give back to our community. To make the most of every opportunity. To act responsibly. To be a leader. To be open to new ideas. A Jesuit education can transform your view of the world. Boston College. Ever to excel. 13 to 10, the Eagles with the lead over the Bulldogs, ranked number 19 in the country with 39 seconds to play in the first half. Folks, tonight's telecast of the 2001 Music City Bowl is being seen live around the world by U.S. servicemen and women and their families through the facilities of the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Look at some of our military people on hand today. Folks, will you see one of them in the airport or yeah. in your travels around the malls, wherever? Give them a hug. Say yeah. thanks. Yeah, those guys are having fun down there dancing for Parliament. <laughs> ah. The old got, school Parliament. Got, I told you I was versatile. You got <laughs> country music down. You got the R&B. And... Incredible. Camilla and Bert. That's, that's it. Except the kickoff. You know I knew that Parliament, did you? Oh. <laughs> I've become a big Space Hill fan since coming to Nashville. Trevor White got the kickoff and is brought down immediately to the 21-yard line. Interesting first half, a first half in which Georgia at times seemed to be really rolling, Chris, but the turnovers constant. Yeah, turnovers kill them. And, and the good thing for D.C., the bad thing for Georgia, when Georgia turned the ball over, their defense didn't respond. D.C. took the ball down and scored every time they got a turnover. First down and 10 for Boston College coming into this game with a record of 7-4. and four. Mallard immediately hit Derek Knight. No gain on the play. We were looted to the turnovers. Three of them so far. There's the first one by Haynes. And the second one right there on the pick. A tip ball drill. Bradley reading Green's eyes. Making a break on the football. And all of BC's points have come off of turnovers. All 13 of them. That's the end of the first half. 13 to 10. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Coach O'Brien, your team really came back from an early shot from Georgia. They score on their first possession, but you had some good composure. Well, our kids have been behind before, so it's nothing new for us. But, uh, you know, we have to continue to control the ball and keep their offense off the field. That's our best chance to win. Well, I thought your defense did a nice job of actually scoring off those turnovers and creating turnovers. Yeah, they've uh, done that. Uh, you know, they, they play good pass defense. They want to keep throwing the ball, and we got to keep intercepting it. William Green, I know he went to the locker room a little bit early. Are you concerned about his status? I know he's suffering from the flu. Yeah, he's got a little bit of dehydration, so they're going to probably give him an IV, and he'll be back the second half. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Mark? All right, thanks a lot. Holly, boy, there's the picture of a cool and calm coach. UGA trailing right now by three. Let's go to the studio and Chris. There's going to be some more guys sick besides William Green if those guys don't put a shirt on at halftime. <laughs> BC really, as, as O'Brien said, playing good pass defense. Georgia kind of stopping themselves, though, offensively. Yeah, you know, they had the three turnovers. That's really been a problem for them. When you think about Georgia, though, you watch them. Their speed is dramatic. They have a real speed advantage. I expect them in the second half to try to exploit that offensively getting players in space where they can use that speed defensively a little bit more man coverage a little bit more pressure especially if green isn't in there to run the ball here yeah and i talked about how good their bass pass coverage is at bc at the beginning of the game they are so good they confuse quarterbacks ken doors hit miami earlier four interceptions now david green two interceptions one a foolish interception in the coverage at halftime mark rick has got to calm him down and keep that running game going so he doesn't throw the ball in predictable situations they do try to bait you into making that throw forcing the ball in there then they make the pick. That's how BC plays the pass defense. You mentioned all day this is Verge Friday on ESPN.com. One of the polls you have a chance to vote on. The best Boston College player ever. It wasn't even close. Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie in a landslide with almost 92% of the 6,200 votes. For Georgia, also a landslide. I tell you what, Frank Sinkwitz. Now here's a guy from your dad's time. He, he was the landslide Heisman guy in 42, if Terry. If my dad could turn on a computer, he would have voted for Frank Sinkwitz. <laughs> and you voted for him, didn't you, Chris? No, I always yeah. fool around. I, okay. Herschel, I think, is a great. I think he's one of the top three or four running backs in the history of college football. I just want Frank Sinkwitz <laughs> to get some pub. He won the highest. Got, got some love there. Got some love.
Sorry, can chat with Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey as they prepare to coach their teams tonight in the Holiday Bowl. Donnan will take care of the Husky strategy. Dick Tomey in charge of the Longhorns offense, at least in cyberspace. They're breaking down the Culligan Holiday Bowl right now on ESPN.com. When we come back here at halftime, I have highlights of the GalleryFurniture.com Bowl. The Aggies getting some unlikely heroic help on the defensive side and some big plays on offense just enough against CCU. Pardon the interruption. 5.30 weekdays on ESPN. Again at 7 on ESPN2. about Nashville? I miss the place I've never been. My heart keeps going back again. I want to take a ride. Rolaids announces unbeatable taste. Five great ways to spell fast relief. And now taste tests show even Tums can't beat Rolaids. In mint or fruit flavors, what a great tasting way to spell relief. Rolaids. announces unbeatable taste. Five great ways to spell fast relief. And now taste tests show even Tums can't beat Rolaids. In mint or fruit flavors, what a great tasting way to spell relief. Rolaids. This halftime report is presented by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horn. Dodge. This is the Dodge Half Summer Report. More from Rod Gilmore and Terry Bowden in just a second. Earlier on ESPN, the GalleryFurniture.com Bowl, one of the last major sporting events in the Astrodome in nearby Texas A&M, brought a bunch of fans. TCU, though, trying to reverse a 23-game losing streak against the Aggies. A&M banged up, having to rely on a bunch of young players here. KC Printers trying to pick on the young corner Byron Jones, who started because of an injury to Sean Weston. Jones had the game of his life. Zero career picks coming into this game, but on the care makes the big pick late first quarter. Aggies will try to cash this in after a 62-yard return by Jones, but the Horn Frog defense stops him down inside the five-yard line, sets up a four-down play, and they stop the handoff. Horn Frog keeping this game scoreless early second quarter. But on the next play, Jones strikes again and says if you, you can't punch it in from the five, we'll, we'll take it down to the one. Well, they keep trying to go to Adrian Medis, and they keep double covering him, and Jones gets help, and he picks off another one. He would add a third pick for the hat trick coming up. They cash that one in for a sneak. Then A&M on the goal line, bubbles the ball again. Charlie Owens scoops it up. TCU's offense shut out on the afternoon, but the defense gets on the board and keeps them in the game at this point. It's just 7-7. Aggies, though, would begin to take control, cashing in the stage. A 21-7 score when Printers, who just had an awful afternoon, is picked off by West Bonovich. That would set up one more AM touchdown. Not an offense used to big plays, but here's Mickey Jones getting loose. You know, Mickey Jones shows you the AM speed, and this is a team that struggled offensively, as you mentioned, Chris, all of the injuries and the like, but they got just enough today to help the defense pull off this win. An intentional safety and an ice water bath for R.C. Slocum, who snapped a four-game losing streak by taking home the very large and heavy gallerypurniture.com trophy. DCU, five turnovers, 11 penalties, and only 11 first downs as are held to a buck 18. The Aggies defense, by the way, the last six games have picked off only four passes. They get four interceptions in this ball game here. And 
that's the way you're going to win the game if you're, if you're A&M. You're not going to put up huge offensive stats, but the defense played great. But I don't think they answered any of their real questions that they want to answer. Again, they don't have an offense under 300 yards of offense. And it was a great win for them. They played hard. But they're never going to compete for the Big 12 championship until they find an offense that can run the ball and make points. Now, they need to go back, I think, to their old offense. Run the ball. Run the option. Don't worry about this pass. That's not R.C. Slocum. I just don't well, think I, it is. I, you know, I'm not sure I agree with you on that because I think you look at this team. I think they did do what they needed to do today. They had a young offense and a great defense. They played four freshmen. They had a fifth-string tight end playing in this ball game. Another sophomore playing for them. They had one turnover. That's amazing when you have a young team, a young offense, protect the ball that way, and you let your defense win the game. They punch it in when they had to. I think they've got a lot of depth coming back for next year, and I think they'll be in good shape if they can get those players ready to go. Very young team, very tough schedule at Pittsburgh. Virginia Tech visits. Nebraska comes on the schedule, but still, you're right, they're very young. Why do you want to bring them down? They finally <laughs> break that bowl <laughs> losing <laughs> streak. <laughs> you're saying they, they don't have they what they're they passing game just enough not hey, to be able to win the conference. They avoided the loss to TC, which would have been bad. This is a big day for the Aggies. Don't worry about them. they got time to put in the more offensive stuff for next season. Halftime, Georgia is down to spice the Gibson touchdown. We'll preview the Holiday Bowl next. Motorcycle in here, you filthy animal. At 400 bucks a night, I'll bring whatever I want to my room. Security! Oh, 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 oh. Help me! I've been run over by Matt Mike Jones! Winter X Games 6 in Aspen begins February 1st on ESPN. and hurricanes, the 90 minutes college game day live from just outside the Rose Bowl, New Year's morning, an hour earlier than normal at 9.30 Eastern time. It'll be 6.30 on the West Coast. And welcome back to our college game day Dodge halftime report. Part of Capital One Bowl week is the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Coming up, Washington and Texas, if pride, if redemption are strong bowl motivators, this ought to be a great matchup. Woodshed beatings don't get much worse than the one Washington took at Miami. Texas comes off the loss to Colorado. We go to a preview now. Mike Sirico and Lee Corso in San Diego. Mike. Hello, Chris on Verge Friday. We're all having fun here, getting ready as this uh, bowl weekend continues. And usually a peak is the Culligan Holiday Bowl. We actually had a shower here a little bit ago, but the weather should be mostly dry for the game. Of course, the Texas story is the major. Major Applewhite, he gets a start in his final career game in the Burnt Orange, and he has 44 school records. Almost brought the Longhorns back in the Big 12 championship game. As Chris alluded to, they'd be a couple hours up the road in Pasadena instead of here in San Diego. Lee Corso, one of the key questions offensively is not major, mm -hmm. but it's Cedric. Cedric Benson, he's just arrived at the stadium, working out, loosening up in the locker room. Looks like, we had a guess, yeah. he's going to give it a go here tonight. What kind of an impact does he have on the offense? Well, Mike, Cedric Benson is the best true freshman running back in the nation. He averaged 4.7 per carry, had 12 touchdowns. But the key stat to me that jumps out at me is that over 50% of his yards were after the first contact. Now, I saw Oklahoma play Texas live and in color. Without Benson, Texas could not run the football. Oklahoma put tremendous pressure on the quarterback. I think it's imperative that Benson and Texas develop a running game in this ballgame. If they don't, I don't care if it's Apple White, 
Tim, me, or you, they're not going to score much if it's a one-dimensional game. Benson is the key. You mean, you're coming after me here. Absolutely. You mean this. I mean, Let's find out what's going on, on the Washington side. Maybe it's tamer over there with Doc and Herbie. Hi, guys. Uh, not much, Mike. Thank you very much. And what Rick News Eyes and Huskies need to do, Herbie, is be able to keep this game close. It means they need to neutralize that potent Longhorn offense and put this game squarely on the shoulders of their sophomore quarterback, Cody Pickett. It's amazing to think that. You want to put the, the game on the shoulders of Cody Pickett. You go back to the beginning of this year, Cody Pickett was breaking in. Very athletic, very fast, but because of an injury early in the year, they've had to rely on him throwing the football much more so as this year has gone on. He's battled through injuries, tough competitor. He's led him to three fourth quarter comebacks. And the thing that you love about this guy is he plays at his best when the game is on the line and he's very tough. Not only that, he gets Jeremy Stevens back. Paul Arnold is very healthy and fast on the outside. Of course, the freshman Reggie Williams, they can get the ball thrown vertically, which will help them against the attacking Longhorn defense. And Pickett needs the kind of day he had against Arizona where he set a Husky record with 455 yards passing. That kind of night would help them against a potent Longhorn offense. Well, Chris, it is the Culligan Holiday Bowl on Verge Friday set to come up at 8.30 Eastern. And we, we've enjoyed the, the chat by all four of you gentlemen on ESPN.com this afternoon. Talked about putting the game on Pickett's shoulders. His shoulders are kind of banged up. He's played hurt all year. They want to punish him on the Longhorn defensive side. Yeah, I think they'll try and do that. And I don't know if Pickett's going to be healthy enough to get the ball down the field of Reggie Williams as much as they'd like to. And that's where Willie Hurst comes into play. They're fine running back. He's not a big guy, but he's a strong guy. They can get the ball to him out in the flat, but they can run him inside as well. I think if they do that, they can keep Texas off the field a little bit, and that will help them. But Hurst is really a key player that Washington offense, Coach. I want to talk about that Texas strength, that Texas defense. This is the strength of their football team. They do a great job. Look at their strengths. They are top 10 in every category, specifically giving up under 14 points a game. Why are they so good? You know why? Because Mac Brown, one of the best recruiting coordinators in the country, he gets great players. Carl Reese, his defensive coordinator, knows how to line them up. When I was at Auburn, Carl Reese was at LSU, one of the toughest guys I ever had to call plays against. You know what, Steve Spurrier may not agree with me, but Carl Reese, one of the best in the country. He's got great talent. You're right. They have great staff <laughs> as a defense, but they haven't played a lot of very good, very balanced offenses. Leaning We're to see. Washington. Motivation. You're leaning on Washington. A little motivation there. Now, they got to win the special teams war, at least not lose it big. Texas has very good special teams. That's another factor in tonight's Culligan Holiday Bowl. So good, good matchup. Well, this is Diedrich DeWalt calling in the St. Pierre touchdown pass. Eagles lead by three over Georgia. As the days grow shorter, so does the time for you to save on a 2002 Lincoln. The Lincoln year-end event. With 0% limited term financing on Lincoln Navigator and every 2002 Lincoln. No payments for 90 days and we'll make your first month's payment. The Lincoln year-end event. Hurry, because we can be generous with everything except... back to our Dodge halftime report. The BCS championship game, the culmination of the bowl season, of course, is the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Ken Dorsey back in his home state, leading the only unbeaten team in the country. He, of course, was third in the Heisman Trophy voting. Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch in Nebraska has to feel like he has a second chance, trying to do what Danny Werfel did, what Charles Woodson did, win a Heisman, then win a national title. But very few guys in history have been able to do that. As the teams build up to the game and get set for the media onslaught, they took time out to visit Disneyland. Here's a report from Los Angeles from Shelly Smith. No, it was very disappointing. That's part of life, you know. Everybody had their trials and tribulations in these water mines. It's not the first one, it showed out the last one. Part of life for Miami fullback Najee Davenport, who broke a bone in his foot last week in practice and is out of the Rose Bowl, but a big problem for the Hurricanes. Davenport was as much the soul of the team as a big time playmaker. Now the job falls primarily to redshirt freshman Willis McGahey, who rushed for 314 yards as a backup tailback this season. This is a great opportunity for Willis, and what happens, uh, you know, when you lose someone like that, now it opens the door for somebody else to have that opportunity. And I think a lot of the success we're going to have or not have depends a lot on that position and how 
keep that uh, he gets the challenge. It was a real good opportunity because you know I've been out for like the last four games, so it'll be a good experience to go out there and show the show the coaches and everybody else what I can do. He was a leader out there on the field, you know, some guy that can step up and but uh Will Smigahee and the other backs are gonna have to step up and do the job and I, I feel that they're very capable of doing that. The other backs expected to see time at fullback are freshman Kyle Colbia and sophomore Jarrett Payton. They are gonna run their system. And uh, the system is going to be run regardless of, 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 of who lines up. The thing that um, uh, that makes us feel that um, that there's probably not going to be a, a major drop off, you know, and if it is, it's probably going to be more from the line of experience than than, than any anything else is the way their coaches have remarked um, about the players. Davenport has taken on the role as advisor. He uh, just told me to go out and play hard. He knows I know the game plan. He said, just when you go out there, do what, uh, how you watch me on, on practice field, how I do, and that's uh, just playing hard all the time. So I'm just going to go out and try to mind myself after him. What to expect, how to take on blocks, just, just all the little things. The uh, little things the coaches can't tell you what, what happens, what goes on on the field. He has a tendency to get upset. You know, like everything go down here. So I, I keep his head in one play at a time. You know, forget about the last play. As for Nebraska, the Cornhuskers had the day off. A lot of players saying they were planning on hitting the beach and then the Lakers game on Friday night. But they're scheduled to be back in pads for a full two-hour practice on Saturday, as are the Hurricanes. In Los Angeles, I'm Shelly Smith, ESPN. You get the hard work out of the way in the morning, you can enjoy your afternoon. And that report, of course, making reference to Najee Davenport of Miami. Broken foot surgery out of the game. Ethnic Sands, by the way, a backup wide receiver for Miami. Not as important as Davenport is to the offense. He's also out of the game. He's been suspended. We'll come back at halftime. Boston College, the three-point lead over 19th-ranked Georgia down in Nashville. taking aspirin for your heart. There's important news about mixing medication you need to discuss with your doctor. It's been shown that ibuprofen, the pain reliever in Advil and Motrin, in some cases may interfere with the way aspirin works to protect your heart. Don't let another pain reliever interfere with aspirin's life-saving benefits. To relieve tough pain, take extra strength Bayer aspirin. Nothing's proven stronger and more aspirin won't interfere. Bayer, take it for pain, take it for life. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. The University of Georgia had an outstanding year in athletics with a third-place finish in the prestigious Sears Director's Cup. And this year, Georgia is ranked among the top 20 public universities. Georgia won three national championships, and once again, a UGA athlete won the NCAA Woman of the Year Award. The academic quality of students continues to rise, as noted by the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. On the field and in the classroom, the University of Georgia strives for excellence. We're back on the Dodge Halftime Report with a reminder that the triple header tomorrow begins at noon Eastern time. Hey, how about Toledo? Chester Taylor. Got to watch him. Probably the best underrated running back in college football. I knew you'd talk about him. Yeah, you, like, you like that K-State Syracuse matchup. I really do. Great offense. Again, K-State can run that ball great offense, but that's an excellent defense in Syracuse. They're the one team that can shut it down. Now we'll see whose defense will take control in the second half of the Music City Bowl. BC making the big plays, frustrating David Green, and the Eagles clinging to the three-point lead. The second half when you come back. You could already be approved for automotive credit, regardless of your credit history. Call the Whatever It Takes Credit Center toll-free, 1-866-TRY-CREDIT. That's 1-866-879-2733. You could already be approved, even if you've had past credit problems, like bankruptcy, foreclosure, repossession, collections, medical bills, divorce. Call now, 1-866-TRY-CREDIT. We've got a big selection to choose from. Many are late model, low mileage, loaded with features, and many still have a factory warranty. Call 1-866-TRY-CREDIT. Plus, we've made arrangements with several financial sources with several million dollars to lend, so you'll get the financing you need, and you'll be reestablishing your credit. 
Call the Whatever It Takes Credit Center right now. 1-866-TRY-CREDIT. That's 1-866-TRY-CREDIT. Or apply online at whateverittakes.com. For goodness sake, we'll do whatever it takes. Commitment. Sure, we're athletes, but we're committed to intellectual excellence. Encouragement. The leadership here is amazing. It's totally dedicated to creating greatness. Development. It's an opportunity for me to develop the skills I'll need to succeed. Opportunity. It's a learning experience like no other. I'm learning to be a better leader. The NCAA Foundation Leadership Conference. Educating future leaders for a lifetime of success. Welcome back, everyone, to the cradle of country music, Nashville, Tennessee, for the fourth annual Music City Bowl. It's 13-10 at halftime. Boston College with the lead over 19 in Georgia. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman, the country music aficionado. And, uh, Chris, reminds me of the Johnny Cash song, I Walk the Line, William Green's performance in the first half. Yeah, William, I tell you, it shows explosive power, but the story of the first half, Mark, has been turnovers. Georgia must protect the football. Boston College did a good job of capitalizing on those turnovers. Our Holly Rowe had a chance to speak with Mark Rick just moments ago. Coach Rick, you're down by three points, but three turnovers. I know you can't be happy about that. No, that's that's the biggest part of the game right now. We're not holding on the ball. Uh, you know, Green's trying to throw a little flatter than he should. And we've dropped a couple key passes there, too, offensively. We've moved the ball well, but it's the uh, same old business in the red zone. You know, we're not taking advantage of our situation. Defense playing pretty good but uh you know we let him break free for one big one flip uh phillips makes a beautiful play but uh it, we didn't capitalize on it we still they still got seven out of it so we got our work cut out for us thank you very much take a look at some of the defining numbers from the first half of course the turnover the major story boston college controlling the time of possession courtesy of the success of their running game green with 126 yards on the ground and you look at the obvious is the turnovers mark but another thing georgia's only given up 108 yards per game rushing in the first half bc alone had 145 with william green going for 126 himself remember folks that green left the bench near the end before the end of the first half he is suffering from the flu is what our Harry Rowe reported earlier in the game Mark one thing to watch when a Boston College is getting the football to start this second half now during the season the third quarter they've had 95 points to the highest output of any quarter they've had all year J.P. Camilla brought down at the 15 yard line the special teams for the Bulldogs Doing well on special teams that time. Well, the brother of Greg Camello with the New York Giants, Brian St. Pierre at the helm of the offense. Good bloodline, too, St. Pierre. His dad is a Harvard football grad. He played at the school. Brian coming in with high expectations for the season. Expectations that, for the most part, have been met. First down and 10 for Boston College. the draw. Lucky to get back to the line as Lewis and Phillips wraps him up. That's yeah, Jermaine Phillips. Now what you do when you bring up an eight-man front, which is a popular term in football nowadays, the safety man comes up and lines up as a linebacker. So that means you have an extra man. They only have seven to block eight. Can't be done if the guys play disciplined defense. That time Jermaine Phillips held his ground and made a good open field tackle on a talented back. Second down and ten. Two tight ends, two wide out formation. It's green again. Gain of one on the play. Bruce Norton making the tackle for the Bulldogs. It'll be third down and long as we take a look at our ESPN game track. The defense for the Eagles, staunch and stout with two picks. And a fumble recovery so far. And you see William Green has advertised 126 yards rushing in that first half. He showed some power and speed. And Veron Haynes not to be outdone as 89 himself. Third down and nine for Boston College. Small Burke slips to the bottom of your screen. Bates 
Pierre got hit hard near the 25-yard line by Jedrick Wynn, number 57, Jonathan Sullivan. He's close to the first down, and he almost lost the ball. Okay, that's a great job with Hudson by Cedric Wynn from the defensive line position. He takes a good shot. The ball does come out of there and win coming down from his defensive end position hustling to get a whack on him big pierre's got to take it to the outside and go for the chain this is the way that bc started the game too it was three and punt that's how they start the third period Jonathan Kilgo gets off a high punt brought down at the 40 and a flag down right there you know much height understand that rule mm -hmm. but I don't like that rule because it puts the defender the guy covering at such a disadvantage because he's running full speed trying to defeat a blocker interference the opportunity to make catch kick on the defense at the five yard penalty first down where he doesn't know where the ball's in the air must give the punt returner two yards and that wasn't even close to being two yards in space we'll be right back You mean you don't have a Capital One No Hassle card? Want a choice of payment dates? Try Capital One's No Hassle card. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. What's in your wallet? Every day can be a surprise. Never a dull moment working here. I always had heard that Walmart was a good company to work for. Our number one goal is to keep our customers happy. That's a hundred percent of your job. We laugh. We laugh at Walmart. We have fun. It's very important to make the customer happy because the customer is number one here at Walmart. Go over there with a smile on your face and that may turn their day around. It's like a family. It's like a big, happy family. I love coming to work every day. How many people can say that? Walmart is a great place to work for anybody. Ooh. Nice shot. Buffalo wing. A buck each. A buck a wing. Woo. How much for the whole buffalo? You know something better for a dollar? How about a 20 minute phone call? Really? Sure. Dial 1010 to 20. It all calls up to 20 minutes and 99 cents. Seven cents a minute after 20. 1010 to 20 is cheap. Hey, the wing? Uh, hey, man, quit blocking the plate. Sorry, dude. My job. Hey, hey. dial 1010 to 20. You practice hey, all man, you're big leaguing me now. <laughs> Back at the Music City Bowl, the Eagles lead by three. William Green, the running back for Boston College, as we said, suffering from the flu. He has actually been throwing up on the sideline. He's horribly dehydrated. They say he will continue to play, though. He's receiving fluids as soon as they can get them. Boy, tough going for William Green. Tough to play that position under the best of circumstances, but when you're throwing up on the sideline, you can only imagine what he's going through. He's going to the the run back Trevor White came from his corner position on a corner, blitz and nailed the fullback, cut his leg, and was able to make the play, not giving one for one, taking two for one. Second down and 11 for the Bulldogs. Incomplete, intended, number 18, Garrett. It'll be third down and long. John Guthrie forced that pass. Why he didn't chase the play action, he held his responsibility, keeping contained on the backside of the run fake, forcing Green to throw that ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. It was interesting to see Georgia enjoy most of their success offensively in the first half when they went to the quick tempo offense. It's a no huddle type offense. Third down and 11. We'll see it again. Blitz coming. Complete. It'll be fourth down. No flag on the play. So that's where the receivers. That one's on the receivers. You got all that time in man-to-man -man coverage. Which way are they? They were in because they brought the safety blitz. Here's the safety coming. Parents coming inside. Now Gibson has to get open. Now he quit on his route. He stopped running. He's got to run. 
White didn't quit. He kept running. The receiver's got to keep running. As a result, Georgia will punt. Jonathan Kilgo. That's he has their beat. punt safe in there. Edward DeWalt. This is his first punt of the ball game. Kilgo. Low snap. You know what? It hasn't been a very good day for the wide receivers on both sides of the field. Both of them suffering from uh, proxy. There's one. Edwards dropping one. And Burke had one there on the skinny post. The wall could have had a touchdown. Came back and caught one later, though. Yeah. Toning for that thing. It's like you got to get their hands out from their body and use their hands. Don't use your body. Use your hands to catch the football. First down and 10 for the Eagles. got through the line of scrimmage in the initial contact. I'll never know. Out to the 26-yard line is William Green. Take a look at the numbers from the respective quarterbacks. 6 to 15 and 12 to 22. You factor in some of those drops and it would have had some better numbers up there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you have a chance to catch the ball, you got to catch it. Now, one guy that caught the ball for Georgia and wasn't in that series was number 12, Mitchell. He came in one series. Green went to him four consecutive times. Mitchell catches the ball four consecutive times. We have a man down in the field for Boston College. Looks like Parento. Offensive lineman, the starting right guard. Yeah, that's the second time he's been down. Meanwhile, William Green, we were talking about him having the flu moments ago. He is facing some very tough conditions. Not tough, but, well, some big decisions to make nonetheless. After this bowl game, he will travel to Miami and meet with his grandma and his uncle, along with head coach O'Brien, and discuss his future. Chris, you alluded to the fact earlier in the broadcast that you've spoken with some NFL people who say he is a high pick. Well, NFL people that are on the advisory board that help the juniors determine where they would go. And William Green, to a lot of people, is number one draft pick. Again, rarely does the first man bring him down. If they do bring him down, they bring him down with an arm tackle. When he runs with power, he delivers a blow. He has breakaway speed. You see there, he's with the two defensive backs. Got to be able to finish that run. He's just a junior at 6'1", 215. And he has expanded his uh, pass route running this year and his catching skills to really become the complete package. Now, last year at this time, Green did not play in the Aloha Bowl because of a violation of an unspecified team rule. He was also suspended this year for one game for a violation of a team rule. But when you meet William Green, you find out personally that he is a very engaging young man, a great kid, a doting father of a two-year-old girl. And you know what? He actually stayed up early Christmas morning, late into the night, to make sure that his daughter's presents were wrapped and ready for her in the morning. Well, that, you know, that, that's part of being a father and taking responsibility. And I circled his arms there, too, because he, <laughs> he has NFL pipe smart. Yeah, he sure does. And one thing, yeah, you know, the only weakness that I've witnessed tonight, and, and obviously I haven't had a chance to sit down and study him, but when I saw him try to pick up a blitz, he had a little trouble blocking it. And that's something that pros, especially running back coaches, demand of running backs, you have to be able to block. So, uh, for example, the guy Thurman Thomas was a great pass blocker. Right. Never got credit for it, but was a great pass blocker. Second down and two for Boston College. Green. Stops on a dime, didn't leave Georgia any change. William Green. And a first down at the 40-yard line and a flag down on the field as well. He changed directions in a hurry. Again, that's his zone play where he has the ability to hit the ball anywhere on the line of scrimmage where he sees fit. Coming back. You saw a demonstration of the skills of Green. Down 
there to Holly Rowe. Guys, the thing I've been impressed with with William Green is his demeanor on the sideline. Obviously, he doesn't feel well tonight. Throwing up, he's very weak. But he has been a leader. He's standing up, yelling for his teammate. He's up off the bench, looking at what's going on on the field. He has got a real passion for the game. And even though he doesn't feel well, he's been a real leader, inspiration here on the sideline. All right, Holly, you know, Chris, it's great when your best player is a very humble guy, too, isn't it? Well, absolutely, because it sets the tone for younger players, and this is how to, the way to get it done. These seniors want to win this football game to build on next year for all the guys coming back. Second down and seven for Boston College. Green stops up at the line of scrimmage by Charles Grant. Grant, one of the better players on that defensive front. And he, too, is considering his draft prospect for next year, just a junior. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee, at Adelphia Coliseum for the Music City Bowl. It's the SEC against the Big East Conference, Georgia against Boston College. John Mark Jones along with Chris Fieldman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines on a cool, clear, and crisp night. Third down and seven. Boston College 5 of 11 on third down tonight. Incomplete. And it's fourth down, no punt. Intended for Burke. And a great job by Bruce Thornton. Again, I'm going to say this again because it's important. A good job by Burke, too, recognizing press coverage man to man. He has, if the corner's playing off, he's going to run a slant. If the corner's playing press coverage on top of him, he's going to run a takeoff. Thornton has a lot of confidence because he's up there playing press coverage, daring him to throw deep, and so far he's answered the, answered the challenge. A smile at a punt. Ooh, and they came after him that time, and he responds with a moonshot. Gary tackles immediately at the 31-yard line. Good special team by the Eagles. And a great punt by McMiler of 48 yards. And you know what? Here in Nashville, the place to be, Market Street. All you can want. And then some. AOL keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver with AOL. I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening email is like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. That's good. America Online. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Hey, that gel is going to clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. To help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge Clean Complete. Clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. Good job. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here in Circuit City. We're with you. Yeah, just put that anywhere. Major Applewhite is back as Texas fights to hold off Washington. Texas, Washington, the Culligan Holiday Bowl, Friday, December 28th on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Dodge. Get somewhere. Grab life by the horn. Dodge. And by Capital One. Proud sponsor of the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. Good special teams work moments ago by Boston College. Chris. Yeah, you want to talk about form tackling. Leading with your face. One step and wrap, two steps and squeeze, and drive him to the ground. If we were ever to do a tackle demo, that's how you would do it. What I've been watching you. I have a feeling uh, we might see one. Green complete for Gibson. 
the first down at the 46-yard line of Boston College. Ralph Parent made the tackle. And uh, George has been successful throwing the ball to the outside. Now, right here, you got to jam him up and slow his time. You can't just touch him. you got to jam him, put your hands on him. And Parent got to realize that he's not going to make the play going behind him. He's got to put his helmet through the back and hopefully knock the ball out. Five-yard pickup and a blitz by the Eagles. And they get to Green back at the 48-yard line. Vinny Churchu, the 5'11 junior linebacker. The top tackler on that defense for B.C. Okay, zone blitz, Mark. This is what I call the Sam and Mike blast. That's the Sam, that's the Mike, there's the blast. Now, why is it a zone blitz? Nobody picked up Churchu. Then you saw Guthrie drop off into the flat to take away the tight end on the bootleg route. the 48-yard line by Parent once again. It'll be third down and long for Georgia, who has now gone to their hurry up offense. Three receiver formation. Gibson, you look to the bottom of your screen. Frank Graziani's defense has done well so far today. Third and 15. Another blitz coming by B.C. Gibson complete. And down at the 33-yard line, another Georgia first down. Peter Sean making the tackle on the play and covering. And at that time, they came with a zone blitz again. Now, he has no chance. Dean has no chance because he's playing deep third. Who has to get under that? He's not even in the picture. It's Guthrie. He's got to work underneath that. It's third 15. Don't think like you're rushing. Turn and run to the out. Brought down by Rossi. Ron Haynes rushed for 521 yards and five touchdowns in the last three games of the season for Georgia. A hard-nosed, determined runner. And we have a player down in the back in for him, actually, now. It's Ethan Smith. The guy who he initially replaced as a result of a Smith injury. Second down and eight. Smith is tackled at the 26-yard line. Well, tonight at 8.30 Eastern Time, Capital One Bowl, we continue on ESPN. The Culligan Holiday Bowl. Major Applewhite finally getting his first start of the season, replacing Sims at quarterback. He's number nine, Texas, against number 20, Washington. And their defensive standout, Larry Triplett. And during the game, folks, log on to ESPN.com and play first Friday. Coaches from Donovan this morning. Third and four. Smith with the first down to the 18 yard line for Georgia. Clark, you're doing a good job knowing it's third and four. What they're doing is they're clearing everybody out, knowing it's his own defense with the play action. Now, watch the linebackers get out, and you'll see Veron Smith come out. On the shotgun, see these linebackers getting out of there. He's just checking down, giving him the ball out there in the in the check down there, and letting him run for the first down. Why? Because the linebackers are getting too much depth now. Nobody's covering the check down. It was a repeat of the play. Again, they hit it back out of the backfield. It's the fullback, J.T. Wall, this time, who's tackled by Churchill. And once again, like what happened in the first half. When Georgia goes to a hurry up offense, they seem to move the wall, ball pretty well. And they are, and, and what they do is they're controlling the tempo of the ball game. And when they do a lot of substitution, they'll huddle. When they don't want to substitute, obviously they get up to the line, ball survey the defense, call it play and run it. Ron Haynes back in the ball game at tailback. He and the fullback wall out of the eye. Haynes moving that pile down to the seven-yard line that time. J.T. Rawl, 257 pounds, leading the way. Nice job of lead blocking. Now, what's happening here is, is Boston College. See the guys out there? The guys out there got their hands on him. Big J.T.'s got his hands on him. That's okay, because he's lead blocking. When the defense has their hands on him, that means they're tired, and they're starting to push, get a good push on that Boston College front seven. You get your hands off your hips, guys, you're tired. This is the 10th uh, play of the 
Georgia drive coming up and keep in mind earlier in the game they stalled down here in the red zone the virtue of a couple of interceptions mm -hmm. and they need to come away with some points here third and inches the Bulldogs looking for their fourth consecutive bowl victory Mark Ritz his first as a head coach here at Georgia Not a bad time to go to the tight end. A little play action pass and hit your tight end because third and inches is successful running the ball. You always have fourth down if you want to go to it, knowing that you've been successful running the football this year. Look for Ron Haynes right off following JT off. There he is. down for Mark Rich, Georgia Bulldogs. Payne getting the job done. Tonight, two for four in the red zone. The season 31 of 44. And the two they didn't get though, again, like you pointed out, Mark, they, they were turnovers. That's not the point. Running hard down to the two-yard line and a flag down on the play. Ralph Parent making the stop on Haynes. First down and goal to go for Georgia. Yeah, you see Ron Haynes think, why, why he gets the face and look at him. He's going to lower his shoulder. He runs low to the ground. Great leverage. And Parent comes in. Got to get him down. Got to bulldog him down. No pun intended, but he's got to grab that face mask to get him down. Haynes, Smith, and Wall in a full house backfield. Touchdown, Georgia. Ron Haynes. That was a, an out tough him drive. They just out tough him. They beat him up up front. They stuffed him down their throat. Now Boston College has to go to the sideline and regroup here. The Georgia Bulldogs seize the tempo with their hurry up offense and march it down the field very methodically. They have retaken the lead. The Boston College trailed early. Georgia jumped out to a 7 0 lead after just two plays. Red 7 0. BC led at halftime. That's the first score. False start of the offense. A five yard penalty. Repeat the try. Okay, that's the first score of the second half. It's Green, the SEC's freshman of the year. Doing a nice job there, especially in the third down situation. Clearing everybody out, knowing where his check down back Smith was going to be. Went to it twice, hit him twice. Both times they picked up the first down. And move this one back a little bit. Georgia looking for its fourth consecutive victory to close out the season. 25-yard extra point now off the toe of And Bennett knocks it through. Yeah, oh, he missed it. Mark, my bad, he missed it. Mark, I'm thinking to myself, Marshall, 75, the guy that jumps offside, just took it from a field goal to a touchdown. From, from a touchdown to a field goal. Mental error. That could come back to Honda. One more look at the touchdown. He made it over by that much. Ron Hayes. Just enough. Good enough for David Green. 3.30 Texas Tech looks to stop Iowa. And at 5.30, K-State tries to put a hurt on the queue. Cincinnati Toledo, the Motor City Bowl at noon on ESPN. Iowa, Texas Tech, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens at 3.30 on ESPN. Syracuse, Kansas State, the Insight.com Bowl at 5.30 on ESPN2. Capital One Bowl Week, Saturday. Heartfelt, strong. Heartfelt 
in motion down on the field between Boston College and Georgia. 16 to 13 after that missed extra point. That was his first missed extra point of the season. That's interesting how Georgia lines up for the kickoff. The reason they do that is so the Boston College guys can't get a count on who to block. But it doesn't help if you kick it out of bounds. <laughs> Take one more look at the tough sledding inside and the work of Haynes. The nice job with BC guys and Lyman getting penetration and getting down. And I, right there, he's not a, right there. He got the ball across. I don't think his knees are down. Great job of recognizing where he is on the field. And getting that ball over the plane. Haynes with his sixth rushing touchdown in the last four games. On that last drive, Green was a perfect five of five. Here's the other Green, Williams. Got to the edge and a good tackle at the 40-yard line by number 22, Ryan. Let's go down to Holly. Guys, we talked about the leadership of Veron Haynes, and it continues to show. Instead of celebrating down on the sidelines after that last touchdown, he's over here playing catch with David Green. They're up by just three, and they're remaining completely focused here on the bench. He's been such a leader for this Georgia team that despite just playing in several games towards the end of the season and averaging just 69 yards a game rushing, they voted him the overall permanent team captain. You better believe he has been their heart and soul for Georgia this season. Well, he carries a lot of grief and a lot of weight on that team. Second down in five. Little option. First time we've seen that from Boston College today. St. Pierre keeps it out to the 45 yard line. Looks for the first down. Brought down by Box Bailey. Pierre, meanwhile, has missed on the last four passes. I tell you, I like that call to get him back involved in the game. He gets the top of 10 by running the football. And he does a good job of reading not to tip that ball. Why you don't run, but you don't want to lose that guy running the football. He's not a runner, he's not going to make his living running the football. But it's a nice little change up to get him back involved and get him going. It's the 16. It's only 28 yards. First down is then Boston College. Flag down and Green stops up right at midfield on Georgia's side of the 50 yard line by Curry. Jonathan Sullivan, number 57 for Georgia, may have jumped offside a little bit early. Yeah, you got an aggressive defense, you want to hard count them. That's what's happened. Hard count and get a freebie. The folks tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Time, a special edition of Monday Night's Countdown as we bring you analysis and news previewing the night's matchup. Then join Al, Dennis, and Dan for a special Monday Night Holiday Bash. Ray Lewis and the Ravens head to Tampa to take on Keyshawn Johnson and the Bucks. Buckball playing for their playoff life now, they, every year. They kind of picked up their play after Lee Flowers called them a bunch of quote-unquote paper champions. Called them out. Call them out. First down and five for Boston College. Green, a tackle for loss back at the 45 by Sullivan. So Sullivan atones for that penalty just moments ago, jumping offside. Yeah, Boston College has done a good job with the tackle trap by getting Colombo to pull around. Right here's Colombo, he's pulling around. But what knocks the tackle trap off is Sullivan getting his penetration and not only taking up two blockers, but making a play that doesn't allow Colombo to get up inside the hole to lead Green into the second level, which is the linebacker area. And just a sophomore playing with a lot of savvy. The Georgia's passing game really starting to make a difference here. St. Pierre was rushed after the poor snap, and it's incomplete. Be third down and long. That's uh, looking at his hand. Bad snap. Look at your hand. That's his roommate, Copen. They'll talk about that tonight. <laughs> Copen and St. Pierre roommates on campus. He's a grinder. I love those offensive linemen. When I was playing, I always roomed with them. I stopped opening the elevator. A bunch of guys said, hey, Cope, looks like you combed your hair today. He looked at them and said, no way, I'd never do that. He took it personal. <laughs> what are you talking about? Third down and 10 for Boston College. 
St. Pierre escaped. And he got the first down. A picture of determination by St. Pierre. A 12-yard pickup. What a run, Chris. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, his buddy does a great job of blocking for him because he said, I'm sorry about the bad snap. The least I can do, this is great job, boy. The least I can do right here is come get a block for you and lead you to the first down. That's a great job of coping, not giving up on the play. And St. Pierre using his athletic ability and his feet to get the first down. First down and 10 for Boston College with 248 to play in the first quarter. Stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. Because Georgia seems to be getting some initial penetration up front, just blowing up that play early. Well, yeah, that's what they're doing, Mark. They're teeing off now what Boston College has to do. To start throwing the ball. Yeah, oh, ooh, ooh. Got to get that, that wet wipes off. Let's drop the football. So they, good job of concentrating keeping it. But Mark, they are getting penetration here, and, and they're coming after Green. So what you have to do is keep them honest, and you got to start throwing some quick timing fouls. Not throw the ball downfield. You don't have to do that to be effective. Just get the ball in here to somebody else and let them do something. Three receiver formation for the Eagles. Incomplete, intended for DeWalt. St. Pierre once again buying himself a little bit of time, but now he has missed his last five pass attempts. 252 yards a game, ninth in the SEC in pass defense, but they worked on it. They had a little extra practice time. Down to 62 yards tonight. That time, Cedric Wynn, another great job of hustling, not giving up on the play and getting a shot on St. Pierre, which forced a low throw because Cedric DeWalt did what the receiver was supposed to do when a quarterback's in trouble, come back for the football. Third down and 15. They've converted almost 50% tonight on third down. Going up top, incomplete. And it'll be fourth down and ten. Brent Adams, the intended receiver. Took a shot downfield, it's a good play. Close everybody up by taking the ball to Green. And Bryant, that's the way. Look and lean, look and lean. That a boy, now go up and catch the ball. A good job of covering now. So make, make the play, look and lean. They don't need it up here. Myler in the punt. Fourth down and 15. And Boston College will call a timeout. No, you don't call a timeout with the ball on the 48-yard line. You go ahead and take the five and still kick it down and pin him back. That's a wasted timeout by Boston College right there. With just two remaining, man. 1.5 to play in the third period. Boston College and Tom O'Brien have had to deal with some heartbreak this year as we flash back to their game against number one Miami, driving for the winning touchdown and score. Brian St. Pierre's pass picked off right there. And then eventually Ed Reed, number 20, will snatch the ball out of his teammate's hands and go the distance on the play. Boston College finally losing by a score of 18 to 7, but when you look at their success in that game, and you look at their schedule and their losses this year, all four of their losses against both teams, and a win against Pittsburgh, who was also a bowl team, but they were able to almost out-scheme Miami and become successful for them. They did a great job against them, and they, you know, they were gunning for that game all year. It was up at Boston College, had the chance to win, beat the number one team in the country, and turn all the college football world on its head. But Miami, you got to be a little bit lucky once in a while, even though you're a great team. They made a big play at the end of win. Fourth and 15. Miles punt. They're going to put this one inside the 10-yard line at the 9. A 40-yard punt. Nothing on the return. As the Georgia Bulldogs out of the SEC looking to improve to 9-3 on the season. 
he buy a field goal with 133 to play in the first. Mark, you saw Coach O'Brien come out there and was, was yelling at somebody because they did take a timeout, and that's to come back to haunt them. There's only two timeouts. You waste the timeout. First and ten. Intended for Gibson, incomplete, out of bounds. Gibson, one of Green's favorite targets today, and we talked about his basketball ability. It's actually he's good friends with Tommy Brown out of Florida. And Brown was the first player ever to be picked number one in the draft coming straight out of high school, and they played AAU basketball today. Second down and ten. This is Tripped up, falling forward to the 12-yard line. A third down and about eight to go. Let's go to Holly. Guys, talking about Fred Gibson, the right receiver for Georgia, he only played two years of high school football. He was actually known as a basketball star, as you mentioned. When he got to Georgia, he really didn't learn the offense very quickly and played very sparingly in their first three games. Once Coach Rick thought he knew a little bit more about the offense, he put him in, and he ended up as the team's leading receiver in yards over the season. They said that his basic philosophy is put the ball up, I'll jump up and get it, much like a basketball pass. Uh, he's a big target, Holly. This one in the air. Caught, but incomplete out of bounds intended for Terrence Edwards. does a great job of squeezing him out of bounds. You see right there, he's working him out of bounds. That's a great catch. Tough to get, get his feet in, but Walt does a good job of using his body to force the receiver out of bounds. That's tall on tall. 6-4 Walls against 6-2 Edwards. That was a jump ball type situation, although it wasn't Gibson this time involved. And rarely do you see a 6-4 corner anymore. I remember the last real big, huge corner was Mel Blunt. Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely. You see a lot of big, tall, wide receivers in the NFL now. Thus, you'll see a lot of big, tall corners pretty soon. All about trend. Jonathan Kildo standing in the shadows of his own goalpost. Walt lets it bounce to the 45-yard line. Good starting field position on this drive for Boston College with 34 seconds to go in the third period. 42-yard punt. Uh, Georgia, as I mentioned moments ago, has won four consecutive bowl games. And I'm sure they'd like to see a BCS bowl in their future one day. That's a, you know, that's a good sign to see teams how they prepare. Georgia's been successful. A lot of, you know, a lot of ministers, everybody paying attention to bowl game record. Right. Mark Rick going to build something special in Georgia. First down and ten. Flag down. Green tackles. The 48 yard line. Is, tell you it takes a village to bring this guy yeah. down sometimes. <laughs> Flag down on the far side of the field at the 46. Might have, a, might have a holding call on the back side, cutting off the pursuit. No. That's against Georgia. You know, Mark Rick said that his biggest challenge when he initially arrived in Athens, Georgia, was getting the players to buy into what they were doing. Basically, a philosophy of hard work, and taking no shortcuts and building a lot of unity through sacrifice and look at his record as an assistant former offensive coordinator at ECU and at Florida State subsequently with Bobby Bowden he said the thing that you learned most from Bobby was just be yourself be fair and enjoy the players and he's done that so far first down and five St. Pierre on the wagon Overthrowing his wide open tight end, Ryan. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter in the Music City Bowl. Mark Rick looking for his fourth consecutive win and his first bowl win as a head coach. The 2002 ESPN Sports Almanac in bookstores now.
cars from Chrysler. So distinct. They have an attraction all their own. In my family, if one wants pizza, the other wants Chinese. Even their stomachs don't agree. If one gets indigestion, the other one gets heartburn. If one gets nausea, the other one gets... So I get Pepto Bismol. As it coats, it relieves heartburn, indigestion, upset stomachs, nausea, and diarrhea. It'd take a box full of other medicines to do what Pepto Bismol does. Agree? Agree. Pepto Bismol, first aid for heartburn, diarrhea, nausea, indigestion, and upset stomachs. You just got over the holidays and you've about run out of money. The last thing you need now is to run out of minutes. Well, now you don't have to. Sign up with Singular Wireless and you'll get unlimited talk time during nights and weekends on plans starting at just $19.99. You'll also get a deal on a Nokia phone. And that is pretty cool. Singular Wireless. What do you have to say? Resistance becomes strength. It becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Gotta love the line dancing at the Wild Horse Saloon here in Nashville, Tennessee. That's uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, right? Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Hart. Thank you, Thank you, Hart. You, you know, uh, St. Pierre's missed his last day pass to Mark. We're about to call it to get to this football game. The least tied on these guys will start to convert, especially when the guys are wide open. And that last pass attempt missing his tight end. Second and five. Green with a nice spin. So you're bringing on the first down at the 44-yard line. The offense moving the ball, the defense for BC. One of the main storylines on our ESPN game track. Two interceptions and a fumble recovery in the game so far, Chris. Yeah, Green had 100, 129-yard rush with only three in that third quarter, though. Veron Haynes is eight. There's another running back in this game. Number 35. I got 105 rushing. For the go-ahead touchdown just a few moments ago. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Green stripped in the backfield but kept his balance. Falling forward to the 41, but there's a flag on the play. Kevin Veal, number 96, moving a little early. An underrated skill is the hard count. Bill Sims is the best at it. Explain. And when you have a, a, a team or a defensive line that can penetrate like Georgia's defensive line can penetrate, you have to find some way to slow them down. A lot of times those guys like to jump the count. And if you go on one a lot, they're going to jump the count on the first touch. But Green is giving them a hard first touch, making them think that the ball's going to be snapped, and getting them to jump because they're so aggressive. First down and five for St. Pierre in the BC offense. Just underway here in the fourth period. Green again, brought down by Sullivan. Gain of about two yards on the play. Boston College has been asked so many questions, but the one that raises their ire so much, and the one that upsets the head coach so much, is one indicated by that streak. 21 consecutive losses against ranked opponents. Yeah, I can understand why that would upset you, but I, and look, they're a good football team with a good program, a great head coach, but what they have to do to take that next step so one day get to the top of the college football world, they got to start beating ranked teams. And 
for me, it's unacceptable that you lose 21 straight to ranked football teams. And they have to have the confidence to do it. We're no longer good enough for them just to compete with those teams. Hey, Pierre's going to talk it over with his head coach. We're going to take a break and come right back to Nashville after this. about Nashville? I mean, it's a place I've never been. My heart keeps going back again. I want to take a ride. You know what it means to be focused, to be persistent, using the best of your abilities to reach your goals. That's why you choose Pacific Life. With the strength of over $340 billion in managed assets and more than 130 years of performance, the Pacific Life family of companies has the financial strategies to take you where you want to go. Rely on the strength of Pacific Life. In tennis, the advantage of the two-handed backhand is obviously power, because you're using both hands. But it also is deceiving because in a split second, you can change the direction of the ball that you hit. Your opponent never knows if you're going to rifle it down the line or rip it cross court, and I like that. Knowledge is the edge. At Invesco, it's the approach we use to invest your money. You should know what Invesco knows. Well, they're not even going to measure. 
a great tackle by a corner on a great running back, Bruce Thornton. Lining up on the line of scrimmage right here. Bruce Thornton's on the line of scrimmage, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the guy who misses the block is Camilla. Camilla's got to lead outside because everybody's blocking down, hoping the linebackers get on the wash. Camilla's got to lead outside on Thornton to give himself a chance. He doesn't have a chance. Thornton makes a great one-on-one -on -one play. And the trickery blows up in their face this time. The sack back at the 25 by Derek Rossi is quarterback David Green. Okay. Why you don't do that? Because you've been successful with play action all night. You don't need to do that. You need to stick with what you did in the third quarter, which dominated the football game. Either run the ball or throw the out cuts or throw the check down to the back. Trickery is not needed right now. Down in 19. Mark Rich likened D.C. to South Carolina and Auburn in terms of the talent level on the team and the way they play. Oh, and that was almost an interception by Scott Bradley. That would have been the fourth turnover for Georgia. Three of them interceptions. Where David Green is throwing the football, but Scott Bradley knows where he's throwing the football because he's reading his eyes. He does a great job of breaking down the football and getting underneath the receiver. Now, Green either doesn't see Bradley or, he's like Coach Rick said, coming out of halftime, he's throwing a low ball. He's got to throw that ball with a little bit better trajectory. There are times where he is inconsistent throwing the ball. Third and 19. And they convert on third down. It's Terrence Edwards. A 24-yard pickup on the play. Well, he's throwing the outside all night, Mark. We just talked about it. You see Terrence Edwards. Walsh is giving so much respect. you got to know where the six are if you're a corner, and you can't let that wide receiver push you that far up the field without getting close on him and count him a little bit. Green. Incomplete and a nice pass breakup by Ralph Barron. And he's second down and ten. That's a huge third down considering that Georgia batted 35 percent on yeah. third down conversion during the season. To convert a third down almost six a night in the Boston College. They need a turnover here or this game could get away. Second down and ten. And Boston College, remember, is just one timeout remaining. Pain. Take the village to tackle him too, Chris. Yeah, see the gold he the gold helmets aren't aren't going to the ball like the red and gold. You don't see eleven gold helmets running to the football. You watch Georgia's defense, you see eleven red helmets going to the football. I think this team's a little bit tired right now. One because Haynes is, is carrying people with him. And we have a man down on the field for Boston College. Haynes, meanwhile, has run the ball 23 times for a total of 113 yards. To go along with one touchdown. More consistent performance. Ron Hayes, the transfer from Western Kentucky. Gives you a lot of yak, as they call it. Yards after contact. Georgia fans traveled very well to this game, Chris. We're looking down below us, and it is an ocean of red. Georgia red. A crowd of over 46,000 on hand here in Nashville, Tennessee, at Adelphia Coliseum. We're going to take a short break. We'll have a report on the issue when we come back. for the install? Hmm, find out your front door, sir. I'll tell you what, we'll meet you back here sometime between uh, 12 and 5. I always wanted to say that. The more powerful Acura RL. Hold on. I lost my wallet and my credit card's within it. You do have a Capital One no hassle card, don't you? Well, don't worry. There's not another human for miles.
Worried about losing your credit card? With Capital One's No Hassle Card, you're not liable for a penny. Plus, get the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates and no telemarketing. Low Lades announces unbeatable taste. Five great ways to spell fast relief. And now, taste tests show even Tums can't beat Roll Aids. In mint or fruit flavors, what a great tasting way to spell relief. Roll Aids. Now, get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call now, 800-553-4400. That's 800-553-4400 for the Wall Street Journal. Smash mouth football right up until kickoff. A little football amongst friends. Sunday NFL Countdown. Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Nashville. Have you thought about visiting Music City USA lately? And by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Look just off Commerce Street in Nashville, Tennessee, downtown. And last night it was the Battle of the Band. Somebody's got to step up on BC's defense and make a play. Third and three. Flag down. Gibson has the first down at the 37-yard line, but will it stand? That's the question. And it's against the Eagles. It'll move the chains. And you know what, Chris? We noted it during the last break. The Boston College defense of Tom O'Brien seems to be just a little bit fatigued right now. Yeah, they're, they're tired, Mark. You know, there's got to come a point in time when you have to step up Offside, and challenge them. defense. Penalties decline. First down. Because David Green is hitting the outside. That's the weakness of the zone defense in the eight-man front. If you have your quarterback hitting the outside, then you've got to come up and challenge those wide receivers and make them throw deep. First down and 10. Georgia certainly has the speed at the receiver position to go deep. That's Musa Smith. And you hear the Georgia fans going, boom. Boy, and, and, and Georgia's offensive line started to take control of that front now because Smith did not get touched by anybody in the gold helmet until he was five yards downfield. And you can just see. The defensive line of Boston College in the backpack. Got to start getting penetration. A five-yard gain on first down. A nice play. You talked about penetration. They got it right there, Chris. And yeah, they did it with a corner flip. Sheen coming up and getting a good shot on Veron Haynes. And then a third down situation again. Sheen, the guy that's been described as the big surprise of the defense, Dr. Porter. There's a tough, tough kid who comes up with a good hitter. And that nice, excellent form tackle and that punt coverage. Now you got Sheen and Gibson working down here. I guarantee you David Green's looking right down here. They got 6-4 against 5-10. That's where back in the ball game for Boston College, meanwhile. And a good open field tackle that time by Walls at corner. And it's fourth down for Georgia. Looking about five to go. And Green wanted to go to Smith there in the check down. See, he wanted to go to Smith. He goes to his outlet. That's a nice tackle by Walls on Gary in the open field to keep him from gaining the first down. Take your timeout. Take your timeout. Make sure you get a play call that you want. Game clock's not moving. Game clock's moving. Play clock's not moving. This Bradley saying, let's get the game clock moving. <laughs> Bennett wondering, meanwhile, if he's going to get an opportunity to kick another field goal for Georgia. They use their first time out of the half. We'll be right back. The holidays have special meaning. It's a time to enjoy the pleasures of the season. A time for family and friends to share the love they have for one another. It's a time to thank those who mean so much to us. And it's a time for us to say thank you to our valued customers and friends. 
Happy holidays from all of us at AT&T Broadband. The Compact Presario 5000T has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. For music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, a powerful Intel Pentium 4 processor. Yeah, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $899. That's for all your financial buffs. Call 1-800-339-4384 to buy now. And upgrade to a DVD or CDRW drive free. Plus, get free shipping. The Motor City Bowl at noon on ESPN. Iowa, Texas Tech, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens at 3.30 on ESPN. Syracuse, Kansas State, the Insight.com Bowl at 5.30 on ESPN 2. Capital One Bowl Week, Saturday. Up next in the bowl menu, the Huskies and the Longhorns from San Diego. And since this is Verge Friday, as in the convergence of ESPN.com and television, Enhanced TV, Jim Donovan and Dick Tomey breaking down the game plans live during the game. Just think about it. You have four coaches to second guess now, not just New Angel and Brown. Boy, Chris, armchair quarterback for Lord. Fourth down and five for the Bulldogs. Mid play to drive. And Boston College has it. Smith thought it was a play action. Green thought it was a handoff. Now you take a timeout to get the play that you wanted to get called, and they don't get it. That's a big, huge mental error. But if you're going to be a great football team, you can't have it, especially Mark, after you take a timeout to call the play that you want to call. Mark Rick wondering what exactly went wrong. Let's see if we can find out. It looks like Haynes slipped and fell. Or Smith slipped, but this fell. Yeah, but... Even though he slipped, he, he, he didn't have his hands up for that football. And his eyes were, he, he, he was looking to block somebody or take that. Look, he didn't know the ball. Yeah. If he knew it was a run, he knew it was a bucket. Fourth turnover of the game for Georgia. Boston College with the ball in zone 37. St. Pierre to pass. Green out of the backfield. Almost intercepted. Stride for stride with him was Boss Bailey. That big, big boss man. I, I'm not talking about the wrestler. I'm talking about big boss man Bailey, the linebacker, running with Green, the tailback, showing great recovery speed. Here's man-to-man -man coverage. Look at look at Lee. He's got that arm up there across Green's arm and does a good job of getting his head back toward the football. Now, St. Pierre's timing is off. That ball was late. He's got to throw that football when Green has a step on him. So he gives big boss man time to catch up. Boss Bailey playing that one. Like a champ, yes. like a brother. Brother, <laughs> brother did support them. Told me looking lean, man. <laughs> Second and ten. St. Pierre wide open. Hitting the tight end down to the middle of the field. It's first down to the 43, Sean Ryan. Now, David Bible was a smart football coach. They had that play open twice. St. Pierre didn't deliver to Ryan. Now, Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker, is absolutely, totally responsible for this. It's cover two. You see Phillips back there. The other safety's back there. Curry. There's nobody covering the tight end because those guys are worried about the wide receiver. The middle linebacker has to take the tight end in the middle of the field to cover two. First completion by St. Pierre in 10 attempts. Flag down and Green is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Offsides again on the hard count. St. Pierre has been able to draw the defense offside a few times tonight. Well, tonight at 8.30, Capital One Bowl, we continue on ESPN with the Colgan Holiday Bowl. Major Applewhite and the Texas Longhorns taking on number 20, Washington. Defensive standout Larry Triplett. And during the game, log on to ESPN.com and play first Friday with our coaches Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey. That game coming up in about 25 minutes' time. First down and five now for Boston College. Edgar Sewalt lined up in the slot this time. Green on the stretch play, the zone play. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Tony Gilbert that time, Chris, atoning for that earlier error. Yeah, it was a great job by Tony Gilbert. A big guy with 247 pounds that could run. Defeating the linebacker and making the play. 
Right here is Tony Gilbert. There you go. Run that way, Tony, because you see the blockers. There gets past the offensive guard, running through the block, and making a great open field tackle. That's how you play middle linebacker. That's a nice job of coming back, Tony. Second down and six. William Green alone back. Uh, you, you know, you, you might want to go back to Ryan again, Mark. Just sitting back here in cover two. Underneath the Burke pushed out of bounds right near the first down marker, about a yard short of it. Now, there's a miscommunication back in that secondary. Curry screwed up. Because Phil plumped back to go to cover three. They were going to rotate the coverage. What I mean by that, it's so a cover two look before the ball is snapped. Then, right before the ball snapped, Phil called for Curry to come up in that eight-man front. That time they had no safety deep because one was playing cover two, one was playing cover three. They got to get communication back there. If you have miscommunication in the secondary, that leads to points. Third down and one to go for the Eagles. Manila and Green out of the eye. They struggled in short yardage situations, but they looked to pass. Incomplete, in and out of the arms of Ryan. So it's 6.25 to go. Fourth and one. Tom O'Brien with one timeout remaining. That Jermaine Phillips comes from the safety spot, does a great job. Saving his buddy right there. That's his buddy's coverage. That's Thornton's coverage right there because that's a deep third. But when you have a safety that has the range to get over there, you get it. St. Pierre thinking that Ryan could have caught that. He's got to deliver that ball a little bit quicker. 0 for 1 on fourth down today. We'll try it again on fourth and 1. Green looks to have gotten it this time. So he went to Green last time on fourth down, and the Bulldog defense stymied it. The Georgia defense has done a great job. They gave up the 17 yards, and you, 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 don't want, you can't take that out because that's a great run by Green. But other than that, he's only averaging close to three yards a carry. Right. They've done a great job of swarming him and gang catching him. Bring the chains in and measure. And they're, they're Coach O'Brien, they're getting a little nervous right now. By the length of the football. Now you, now you can relax. <laughs> On the TV, they're pulling the tackling guard out there, blocking down the tight end, and Green does a good job of keeping those leg drags. Uh, to me, according to that angle on that pitcher, Got a generous spot. Second half. It's been a tough going for William Green. 14 yards. It's outstanding defense. First and 10 for Boston College. The Waltz. They're going to rule it complete at the 10-yard line. Dedrick DeWalt, the senior. That was a nice shot by St. Pierre right there on the skinny post. It's a tying route. He knows Dedrick DeWalt's going to be there. He throws it to the hash mark, only where Dedrick DeWalt can catch the football. The great pass. Ryan St. Pierre waited two years to get the starting position. He sat and watched Hasselbeck do his thing, but now it is St. Pierre's turn. And he's poised and ready to take advantage of his opportunity. Brought down at the 7-yard line by Curry. And Bree Station. He can run a little bit. Now he can. I'll tell you, Curry can run a little bit, too, because he came out of nowhere to secure that tackle. That's a good job of St. Pierre, though, gaining four yards. On the play where Georgia had a blitz on from the back side, and then Pierre recognized it, saw everybody's back turn wide because it's man-to-man -man coverage in that blitz, knowing that he can gain some positive yards. The Curry recognized it, did a great job of closing. Second down and goal for Boston College. Two tight end formation, a single back set. Boston Polish. Green with the critical fourth down conversion and 
now a seven-yard touchdown run to get Boston College the lead. They lead 20 to 16, and keep in mind Georgia missed an extra point, which would make it a field goal advantage only. Boston College's offensive line hasn't won a lot of battles tonight, but it won the battle here. Green doesn't get touched, does a great job of cutting back and scoring points. Be right back. with an Intel Pentium 4 processor for just $8.99. Call or go online today, and the shipping is free. I know. I know. Easy to buy, easy to own, easy as Dell. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, the playoff crunch is on, and special guest coach Bill Parcells is back to help break it all down. Cordell Stewart, the Steelers QB, has emerged as a leader who could take his team to the Super Bowl. Cordell really impressed me. Plus, the 49ers' Garrison Hurst and his amazing comeback story. This 49er team is better than they were because Garrison Hurst is better. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown, beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. <laughs> Horse and buggy ride. I hope our producer Brian Carter and director Bob Fatteroli had that wait for it instead of the limo, huh? Yeah, that, that's their idea of a limo when they say we send a limo for it. They bring us a horse and buggy. Boston College with a four point lead. Edwards on the return. And Tackle to the 24 yard line. Important that the Boston College defense, Chris, had an opportunity to rest a little bit during that first drive, using up a bit of time on the clock, because prior to that, the Eagle defense was on the field for a long time and looking tired, I might know. You're right, Mark, and they did need to rest now. If you're looking at the clock, it's 433. You don't have to go to a hurry-up offense. Why? Because you've been successful running the football against the tired defense. Now, this comes to a battle of guts right now. Who wants it more? First down and 10 for Georgia. Haynes, tackled at the 27-yard line by Scott Bradley. Scott Bradley almost had himself an interception on the last drive by Georgia. Scott Bradley's last football game in the Eagle. Captain has played a heck of a football game tonight. Tough on the run, excellent on pass coverage. Good football player, smart football player. Three-year starter for the Eagles. Second down and five for Georgia. Green brought down at the 30-yard line. Four yards short of the first down by Tom Martin. Don't forget, folks, coming up next, more on Capital One Bowl Week. It's the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Number nine, Texas. Hey, Major Applewhite getting his first start of the season. Against number 20, Washington. Part right up after this game. Third and four. Haynes got the first down and then some. Tackled at the 42 by Ralph Perrin. You're about to call it. You're all right with that. Why? Because it eats up time off the clock. And Georgia needs a touchdown. Because of the missed extra point, they're two possessions down. They need a touchdown, not a field goal. A field goal doesn't help them. First down and 10. The big tight end. Pick up about nine. Green, meanwhile, 21 to 35 after that completion. Along with the touchdown. Michael going to think about his future immediately following this game. 
for the Houston Sun Pro. 49 yard line. Second down and one. Big fullback, J.T. Wall, running like a brick wall. <laughs> that guy's got cement on his body. Again, if you're watching Georgia, there's no panic. Green keep his composure, and they're sticking with their regular offense. Green's composure reflects that of his head coach, Mark Rick, former quarterback at the University of Miami, and quarterback coach. Blitz coming. Complete to Gibson. Tackled immediately with the 37 yard line by Trevor White. All right, the came with the safety blitz, and Trevor White was smart right there. He played off. You don't want to give anything over the top. He did a great job of open field tackling because Gibson could do some damage. He could have broke that tackle. That was six points. 20 to play in the fourth quarter. Green putting it up for a jump ball. Flag down, but who's it on? I, it looks like to me, I, I, I think it's offense. I really do. Because Walls is going up for the football. He's looking for the ball. Yeah, I'm going back. That was against Terrence Edwards. You're not going to out-jump six-foot-four-inch Walls. No, that's not a bad job by Terrence Edwards either. He's got to turn into the defensive back here because you can afford in this situation, you don't want it, but you can afford a penalty. What you can't afford is the interception. So you're Terrence Edwards. That's not a bad play, Terrence. Don't worry about it. That's a smart football play. You don't want to give up the pick. Walls thought it was on him for a while. Offense. Interference. 15-yard penalty. The margin is four points in BC's favor, but keep in mind, folks, that Georgia missed an extra point after a touchdown in the third period. By that much, a game of inches it is. Yeah, and and that, that was set up by an offside penalty mark, which moved the ball five yards back further. Payne. Corralled at the 48-yard line by Levitt. Two minutes to go in the fourth period now. Georgia with two timeouts remaining. Boston College with one. As they lift up the field. Now you're going in your hurry up mode. He's a key part of their offense. They can't have him out too long. Lucas Smith comes in in his place. Third down and 12. They've got to get to the 36. Almost intercepted and incomplete. Walls and Bissett teaming up on the coverage. Yeah, Bissett did a nice job. Didn't have a deep threat down here toward Georgia's sideline. His head goes right to the deep end and helps his buddy Walls, who had over-the-top coverage, with Bissett was sitting underneath. That's a good job of both guys converging on the football. A stop here for the Eagles, and they might have their first win over a ranked opponent in 22 consecutive games. Fourth down and 12. The punting unit comes in. Jonathan Kilgo standing at his own 38. I don't know. You got to take a timeout, man. You rethink this here. With 1.32 to go, Mark Rick has a whole box and bag of tricks up his sleeve. You know that. Delay the game. Offense. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. All right, now, if you punt the football, you have two timeouts to stop the clock. Then again, that means you won't have any time to stop the ball if you get the ball back. Fourth and 12. Boston College has nobody deep. Mark, let them stick it down it. They pick it away. able to prevent it from going into the end zone. It'll come back out to the 20. A 53-yard punt. Don't forget, coming up next, Texas against Washington in the Culligan Holiday Bowl. That's a, that's a gamble. That's a gamble. It, it, it is interesting. Now, they have to stop them here and hopefully either get pressure or the ideal is to try to block the punt and get field position. You're in 4th and 12 on both.
Boston College side of the field. You gotta go for it with a minute 30 to go. I'd like to go online right now when we're trying yeah. and find out what our coaches online pick, Jim Don and, and Dick told me about that strategy. Yeah, well, you know, it's one first down away, it's over. First down and ten. Boston College on the brink of the Big East's fourth consecutive victory in this classic. And William Green is the guy they've been riding without a saddle all night long. William Green, the junior, 6'1", 215 pounds, perhaps playing his last game at Boston College. We'll take the timeout. Georgia with just one remaining. And Boston College with a timeout remaining. Boston College coming into this game with a tip maybe on both shoulders, which could tell you they had an even temperament. <laughs> they were a little upset that a lot of people were asking about that streak. Yeah, this is a big game for them. Yeah, this, is, this is one that they took personal because they've been hearing it from everywhere that, yeah, you guys are, are good enough to compete with the big teams, but you're not good enough to beat the big teams. This is a ranked team, Georgia, very talented team with a lot of great athletes. This is a game, hopefully, that will propel them to the next level of college football. But hey, no, it's not good enough to compete anymore. You train to win these games, not train to compete anymore. They've been motivated by a lot of factors during the course of the season earlier in the year. Their motivation was based in part on the fact that some of the prognosticators picked them to finish in the middle or lower half of the Big East Conference. But Tom O'Brien, their head coach in his fifth year, has used that and other things as fuel. Right now, they're on the verge of defeating Georgia, number 19 in the country. And all these, these points have come off turnovers, team, which is huge. It's something you're always going to capitalize on. The turnovers and scoring off turnovers. Second down in seven. William Green. Trying to protect the ball and brought down at the 21-yard line. Green taking his time getting up. He has been a workhorse today. It'll be third down and about eight to go for Boston College. Coach Rick choosing to save his timeout for when his team gets the football or after this play, you're going to have to stop the clock. Now, if you're Boston College, obviously you're going to look at the clock, you're going to run it down, you're going to snap it with about two seconds left. Everybody up there to stop the run. Green again. There they go. They stop the clock. On the 23-yard line. Georgia now out of timeouts with 25 seconds to go. And what a night it's been for William Green of Boston College, perhaps playing in his last collegiate game. Left, right, outside between the tackles. He's been performing in a stellar way for BC. Had the one long run for 70 yards. And William Green is our Capital One player of the game. Look at that acceleration. He had a little candy for everybody on that run. Well, he's certainly impressed tonight. I know a lot of pro scouts are watching tonight. You can see this young man decides to come out. He's the back we want on our football team. A young man, Chris, that has endured a lot of adversity in his very young life. Losing his mother and father when he was very young, just a teenager. He's very close to his grandmother and his uncle right now. Those are the two people that will help him determine whether he goes pro or not. And look to Coach O'Brien, too, for a lot of advice. And that's a, a good man to get your advice from. Now, now, if ever you need pump protection, it's right here and right now. And I guarantee you out there, they'll tell them, be solid on your pump protection. Don't be in a hurry to cover anything. Make sure you block. Hold your block. McMiler, the punter, has had two blocks this year. I just saw Parrot, the wingman, give himself the sign of the cross. <laughs> he's, he's looking for everybody to help him. McMiler gets off a low-line drive. Jerry back at the 45. 
Brought down at the 47-yard line with 14 seconds left on the clock. Well, two plays maybe, huh? Yeah, well, we're up here, and it's easy for us to call a game up here, but I think you're in a much more manageable position on 4th and 12 on the 47-yard line with a minute 32 left as opposed to fourth or first and 52 with 14 seconds left. I mean, you know, it's easy, like I said, though, it's easy to second guess the way it worked out. That time left, though. That time. Game's not over. Green had the miracle in Tennessee. We'll see if he can do it here. Ruled incomplete at the 37-yard line with seven seconds remaining. And the Bulldogs out of timeout. And they needed that one, Mark. Why? Because now he's got to throw it about 70 yards in the air to give them a chance to win a jump ball. They got a lot of tall guys there, but Green's got to have to throw it farther than he's thrown it in a long time to give themselves an opportunity to win. Now, if you're BC, you get back. Get back. I'd rush Green. Get up. The linebackers, back up. Yeah. Green under the ref and sack. They won't get one off. That's it. Boston College finally defeating a ranked opponent for the first time in 22 tries. Feels wonderful, Holly. I can't tell you how great it feels for these kids. I mean, what a great effort. Comes down, defense stops them at the end. You said before the season that to get to the next level, your defense had to get better. They were the stars tonight, Coach. Absolutely. They gave up the first touchdown, a long kickoff, and then played great the rest of the night. Well, congratulations. No more monkey on the back. Thank you. Boy, it feels good, man. <laughs> Mark, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. They said that last year in Hawaii, they were a little too lax. This year, they used a different approach, and they came out the victors, 20-16. to 16. For Holly Rowe and Chris Spielman, I'm Mark Jones. They had so long. Right now, let's go to Chris Fowler in the studio. Yeah, they win by four, and they win the turnover battle as Georgia kind of self-destructs with four turnovers. And as for William Green... He gets sick in the sidelines. He comes back in. We call that boot and rally. Boot and rally. Boot and rally. Well. 149 <laughs> yards in the game-winning touchdown. We're going to boot it out now to San Diego. The Culligan Holiday Bowl, the third of our triple header game, an attractive matchup, Washington and Texas. We go to Mike Tirico now to set the table. Mike? Hi, Chris. Another all-time awesome San Diego sunset on this final Friday of 2001. Final game for Washington and Texas, two teams that had bigger dreams a little while ago. And as with every bowl game, questions abound pregame significant ones here let's take washington first 34 days since their loss to miami how scarred are they are they that bad can they handle another team that has better physical talent in texas and as for the longhorns it's been 27 days since the disappointing loss they were this close to be a couple hours north of here at pasadena and the rose bowl presented by at&t who's playing for the championship they're not they're here at the holiday bowl for the second straight year where's their momentum how do they rally the troops how will they respond? How is their running back, their star as well? For more on that down on the field, pre-game check with Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc? Well, Mike, as kickoff approaches, if you're a Longhorn fan, you're wondering about their phenomenal true freshman running back, Cedric Benson, who was injured back on December 1st in the Big 12 championship game, bruised to the nerve in the right shoulder, causing a decreased range of motion and weakness. He had not practiced until four days ago, and in fact, had not had any contact until about four or five minutes ago. This is pre-game warm-up. This is Mad Dog Madden, the conditioning coach, hitting Benson on that right shoulder. Moments later, they gave Benson the football. Should he hang on? Yes, he did. That's the big question for Mac Brown and the Longhorns. Can Benson hold on to the football? Over on the Washington sideline, sophomore quarterback Cody Pickett injured his right shoulder at his throwing arm back in the middle of October. He is about seven.